I cheated. I cheated again. I don't care. I really don't care. Cause, cause you know what? I'm bored. I'm bored with the same old shit. Obviously the most burning thing on everyone's mind today is Sandoval and Raquel's affair that happened right under everyone's noses. I saw Sandoval and Raquel dancing together at the Abbey. I'm glad I cheated. Too much booze. Grow up. Bored now. The thirst is real. And at least I have the balls to do something about it. Before we dive in, is there anything you want to say to Ariana or the group at large? Uh, I just uh, want to thank everybody for being- Pull yourself together, man. This isn't a fucking You're not Oscar. a victim. You're not at the Oscar. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. The sad sack act is fucking bullshit. I'm not a victim, guys. Cheers to that. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to say. Don't look at me judging me. Yo, be a man, mate. Get... Be a man. Pull yourself together. Fucking cro crocodile tears, pussy. You get tired of the same old crap all the time. At least I do something about it. Tom, I just want to say that I appreciate everybody for being there for Ariana. At least I man up and I do something about it. So you know what? F you for judging me. No matter what was going on in our relationship, she didn't deserve it. I am a cheater. I'm a cheater. Nobody deserves to have that happen. Nothing happened. You did it. I'm sorry for doing the one thing I said I wouldn't do, and I did it in the worst way possible. I love you and I apologize. Mm. Nah. That didn't hit for me. I didn't even listen. That didn't hit for me either. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bravo Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Comedian and Bravo superfan Jolene Lenzer here to break down all things Bravo. Tonight, we are going to be talking about the call her daddy interview that uh, Ariana Maddox did Um but like a week ago, sorry, my hands just made a farting noise. I swear I didn't fart, but even if I did, gas is natural. Um, you know, sometimes we just all get a little sweaty hand nervous. All right. So thank you guys all for joining me tonight as we break down the Call Her Daddy interview. It was a really good interview. Okay. If you don't know, Call Her Daddy is a podcast hosted by, I believe her name is Alex Cooper. And uh, she has a very popular podcast and she has a lot of people. She's interviewed lots of people. And I've listened to this podcast now um, in this episode with Ariana. And I feel that they had a great connection. I thought we got so much information out of it that I have to listen to it again. And I'm going to try to react to it, do some fair use reactions here. Uh, maybe just audio, possibly video. I am worried that Spotify might strike me, but that's, I mean, you never know. Okay. Uh, we'll try it out. We'll see what's happening. Joyce, thank you so much for joining the YouTube membership, you guys. So before we get into the Call Her Daddy interview, and you know we're going to do it like we do on my channel, and you guys know the drill. Uh, but if it is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe. We are well on our way. I mean, we're over 31,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I had a goal of 30,000. We hit it, I think, on May 3rd. And then my next goal is 40,000. So let's see if we can do it. Uh, share me out with your friends if you feel so inclined. And uh, we take a comedic look you know, at all things Bravo, but we also deep dive. We do a little emotional stuff. You know, I'm very opinionated. I always warn people because for some reason, even though it's comedy and commentary, people will be like, you're so biased. Yes, I am. I am very biased. I am. Uh, that's based on all my experiences and you're feel free to be biased. You can have your opinion in the chat, uh, in the live chat right now or in the comment section later you can sound off. We can just all have a good time talking about Bravo, agree to disagree sometimes, and then agree to agree sometimes. But most of all, we like to have a laugh. We're having a laugh. So hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you can do what Joyce did and you can join my YouTube membership. You can check me out on Patreon or you can send a super chat uh, while the video is uh, live, while we're live right now. A super thanks after. Thank you guys who have been sending me super thanks after the videos are posted. It, I'm 
forever grateful for you guys for supporting the channel in that way. You don't have to, but it's, I appreciate it. Um, and then uh, obviously PayPal, blah, blah, blah. All the fun stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for the first super chat of the live. She is way more believable than he is, obs. But we need the Uber driver to come out ASAP. Oh my gosh. So there's an Uber driver in this story, the scandal, and I would love to hear from him. Something tells me he might come out. He might come out. So thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, LL Nut, and everybody who has congratulated me. I am in my new home, new studio, and thank you for your patience with me. All right? Appreciate it. Yes, I'm an Aquarius, and we are biased and petty AF. Okay? It just It's in the stars, like Allie says. It's in our anus and in our moon and all the stuff. So there we have it, you guys. All right. Let's see if we can um, share it via my screen share and get right into it. So let me know what uh, all your thoughts, hopes, dreams, and opinions in the live chat as we react to this and watch it. We're trying to get through uh, the whole episode, but it is two hours. So we will see. I'm going to see if I can. All right. Can I play it through here? I don't think so. I think we're just going to do audio. We're just going to be on the safe side. We're going to do audio. We can pull up a couple pictures while we're at it and have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on all of your disco sticks. All right. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Rachel. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Rachel. Thanks a lot. Oh my goodness. All right. 12 more likes to get to 100. Yes. Hit that like, you guys. It helps so much in the algorithm. Let's get right into it. So like I said, Ariana, this is her on the Call Her Daddy podcast. If you want to see video of this and you want to listen to this separately, I will put a link for it in the description of this video after the video posts and um, you can check it out on Spotify. I couldn't find it anywhere else. Just on, well, I mean, that's my place. It wasn't on YouTube. So I looked on YouTube and then I went over to Spotify and that is where I found it. Okay. I'm going to play it at 1.2 speed. You guys let me know if we have any audio issues and you can't hear it for some reason, but I think we're just going to play it through my phone and react to it as we go. All right, let's do this. Extremely invested. But the one noisy scandal. Okay, so the beginning is Alex, the host of Call Her Daddy podcast. She's kind of explaining to her large audience, in case they've never heard of Scandal, what is going down, why it is something that even if they don't watch Vanderpump Rules, they might be interested in because it's this huge cheating scandal that is very layered. So that's what you'll hear in the beginning. It's just the end of her explaining this to her uh, audience. And everyone's like excited to hear. All I just want to remind everyone, this is Ariana's life. This was her relationship. Mm -hmm. This was her best friend. Yep. And when this happened at the time, it probably felt like her world was turned upside down. So even if you don't watch reality TV, that's okay. Because unfortunately, this episode is extremely relatable because it's about... And that's what we keep saying. You know, I, I'm going to do a separate video about this, but Andy Cohen came out today and was like, everyone needs to stop. It's getting ridiculous. Andy, be stop it. Calm down. I want to tell you to shut it. I, I love you. And sometimes I'm just like, what are you doing? Okay. Uh, no, stop with this. Tr stop trying to save your golden boy. You and Lisa Vanderpump, it's not going to work. It's airing in real time. We're going to have real reactions to this. Okay. This is a very layered cheating scandal. This is very triggering. This is very hashtag relatable. It's not that people want to have a mob mentality or want to be pissed or want to hate on people. It's that this is so relatable. This horrendous behavior that Tom Sandy, Butt, we call him Sandy, Butt over here, you guys, that he is displaying is something we've seen and something that, you know, what's so irritating to me. And I know I was, I was going to do a separate video about this, but you know me, once I get on one, I'm opinionated. Okay. Why is why are they just sticking up for the golden boys so much? What about Raquel? I, I mean, if you think they're going hard on Sandy, but what about Raquel? Raquel is allegedly in a mental institution, okay? Sandy, but is posting pictures on tour with his shirt off with other women. He's already been rumored to be with some influencer chick in Austin. He is fine. But now we're going to see that propaganda happen. We're going to see the media be totally hypocritical and tell us there's something wrong with us even as they make money off of it, which is so ridiculous. Even in the Nightline episode that they use some of my um, TikTok, which was super fun, 
by the way, uh, the Scandival one they did, I feel like at the end they were starting to um, uh, reprimand us. Start, and I'm like, you just did a whole episode about this. You guys just made hella ad money off of this. Now you don't get to come and tell us how we can react or behave. We are the audience. This is a reality show. These people are paid very well to put their lives out there. No one is, none of us normal people or healthy people are out there wanting to threaten anyone, but it's okay for you to have opinions and it's okay for you to voice those opinions. And it's okay for you not to like this dude right now or what he did or like him possibly ever again. That's okay. But they're going to start shaming us while they're still making money off the show. Tom Sandoval is fine. He's on fucking tour. He's on stage every night. Probably, allegedly, who knows? Everything I say is alleged and the truth, except for the parts that are false, okay? Probably just banging different chicks every night. What about Rachel Raquel? If you're really going to play that card, then why don't you say the same for her? Why are we just got this campaign about poor Tom, poor Tom? Accountability. Look it up. He needs to be accountable. It's okay for the public to have a negative reaction to negative bad behavior. That's actually quite natural. So I'm just like, here we go. You guys are making bank off this show. You're getting more viewers than you ever have. The media is running with this. People who have never watched the show are now putting out content regarding the show because it makes money. And then in the next breath, they are going to try to tell us how we should feel and shame us because we're like, this dude sucks. This dude's behavior sucks. How this dude handled it handled it sucks. This dude was uh, cruel. He was cruel to this woman. This is something that unfortunately a lot of women and men can relate to in a partner. And so people are gonna have opinions about it. So you can keep cashing your checks. I know that's old school reference. <laughs> you can keep getting your money off this media and Bravo, but don't you come in my living room Mm, new Trader Joe's candle. ADHD kicks it. But don't you come in my living room, my office, on my devices and tell me how I'm supposed to feel. Because this is how we feel. This is how we feel. And it's okay. All right, let's keep going. Cheating, betrayal, dishonesty, manipulation, and heartbreak. So daddy gang, I'm excited to give you Ariana. And I'm excited to give her a... If she has the daddy gang, we have the lean team. So lean team, I'm excited to play. Alex's podcast and commentate on it. Space to open up and speak about this and have a really open, honest conversation. So here we go. Let's get into it. <laughs> what is up, Daddy Gang? It is your founding father, Alex. Okay, I guess I don't have to listen to the intro. Okay, here we go. This is she's like, hey Ariana, how you doing? Ariana's like, pretty good. And she's well, that's not what she says, but she's like wearing her sweatshirt, her merch that says "Born F and Cool." <laughs> Can you explain? what the past few months have felt like to you? Mm, um, a roller coaster. I mean, truly like the lowest lows, I think maybe ever, maybe since my dad died that I've experienced. Um, and then I wouldn't say the highest highs, but I would definitely say that there's been like some really amazing bright spots. And it sometimes feels like, I don't know, like a ping pong match in between those two extremes. Right. I have a tendency to like compartmentalize a little bit with emotions. It's the Virgo moon in me. Mm -hmm. um, but it that totally, you know, Allie is so proud of her right now. James's girlfriend, Allie is like, yes, girl, it is your Virgo moon. I don't want to scare anyone, but I might have a Scorpio moon. Last time I got my chart read, which would explain a lot. It's weird because also sometimes when I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm doing, I'm feeling good. Like things are really positive. Then people on the internet will be like, why is she must have not cared? They're like mad at me for like healing. But then they like, you know, but that's the thing is it's like, everyone's always going to have an opinion about like how you should live. Totally. So, something I want to talk about is like, I think so many people have had something to say for so long about this scandal. I'm like we haven't really heard from you about like start to finish in long form your thoughts, everything that's gone down. So today I'm hoping we can like put it all into one. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, let me yes. just, let's take a little <laughs> rosé. Cheers, here we fucking go. Necessary. Okay, so here we have and go. We got Ariana the first time speaking in the long form about this besides the reunion, which is edited and cut up. Not that this podcast isn't, but this is really a very conversational podcast. And uh, so, I mean, we already, we're going to get, 
Ariana explaining what happened that night. We're going to get a lot of information and uh, a lot more reasons that Tom is a butthole. Yes, the lean team. And you guys, I'm loving your comments in the chat. So keep them coming. Welcome, Moni Moni. So glad you could join us live. Don't forget to hit the like. Okay, now she's got some ads for Celsius, which oh, I should have grabbed a Celsius. Ooh, but make sure you got your beverages, you guys. This is a long one. I got my Waterloo Tropical Punch or Tropical Fruit, which is my new favorite mineral Healthy bubble water. All right, come okay. on, It'll, come on. Can you take me go. back to the night that you found out that Tom was cheating on you with your at the time best friend Raquel. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you were at a concert of Tom's. Mm -hmm. His phone fell out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. Someone handed it to you to just take your boyfriend's phone and hold it. Mm -hmm. Take us from there. Um, so they had like one more song after that. And so I was holding like my phone and his phone just kind of as a stack. Um, and had no, like, there's nothing weird about that. I mean, we were together for nine years, like me holding onto his phone, his, you know, his laptop, his, you know, whatever. It's not weird. So they had like one more song. And then afterwards, um, I got up to go over to him and tell him like, good job and uh, give him his phone back. And he was talking to some other of the band members. So he's a little preoccupied. He's a little busy. And I was like, okay. And then literally I just, in that moment, I was standing in the back of Tom Tom and I just was like, I don't know. I was just like, it felt like I like divine intervention or something because, you know, I've always been very hesitant to become like the snooper because I always feel like anytime you snoop in anyone's stuff, even if they're not guilty of doing anything wrong, you always end up finding something you don't want to find or seeing something you don't want to see. And I always feel like it's a slippery slope because once you look once, then you want to, it becomes an addiction. Cause I've it's true. It is a hundred percent true. You should not have to check your partner's phones, devices. Once you start going into that territory, there's something wrong, wrong with the relationship. However, if you feel that this person is lying to you and you are getting betrayed, check that shit, check that shit so you can get out, so you can make a decision, so you can actually be informed because it's very unfair when the cheating parties carry on and you know with this affair and you don't have the information it also can put you know your literal life at risk with the whole std sti situation so i advocate for women follow your gut if you feel like something's going down check that shit. but it is a slippery slope because like ariana says once you stop once you pop you can't stop it is like pringles and pringles aren't even that good but it is that is how it goes um, I am someone who I just don't want to, because like Ariana will explain, you can see things, misconstrue things. It just opens up. I just, I don't want to be in a relationship where I have to freaking double check to make sure you're telling me the damn truth. Just tell me the truth. If you want to go get different vagina, just tell me, just go, just please stop, go leave, you know, get out right now. It's the end of you and me, you know, and it's too late and I can't wait for you to be gone. So just leave. I'm not going to beg you to stay. Just go. I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm, I might hurt you, but no, I'm going to get in my Honda CRV. I'm probably going to eat a lot of food um, and call my friends and cry, but I'll be fine. But just tell me. So the phone checking, I totally understand what she's saying here, but I'm so glad she checked. Been like that in past relationships. So in this one, I was always like, I'm not going to do that. And if I ask about something, um, I will, you know, take their word, Tom's word at, you know, face value. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like I will Trust be him. someone who trusts because I don't want to become that version of myself. Totally. And so, but in that moment, I just had this thought like this, like, go do it. This is like a time to do it. Um, and so I went into the bathroom at Tom Tom. I went into one of the stalls. Um, he had not changed the passcode on his phone. So I knew, and that's the other thing is like, we knew each other's passcodes. We knew each other's. So it felt like if you were going to be the type of person who is, ah, that's what makes him so dirty and icky and gross is the fact that he was like, no, babe, here's my password. We're that couple. We trust each other. We're best friends. I respect you. I would never do that to you. So he, and, and then he hid it in these secret apps and things where she couldn't find stuff. But this time he wasn't quick enough to hide. But that's what makes it so freaking cruel and gross is that Ariana says I had previously, you know, asked him and he was like, no, here, check my phone. She had been able to look at his phone and she's like, oh my God, I'm being ridiculous. So not only is that just like unnecessarily cruel, like we've talked about before, but it's such a mind fuck. 
you know, and it can really be emotional damaging obviously to someone and he knows ariana already has trust issues she's been very open about that on the show and yet he he's so freaking he's such he's such a monster <laughs> just I, there's no better word for this behavior it's it's beyond selfish like she said it is just unnecessarily cruel you are only benefiting yourself you must have gotten off on this sir that you would make your girlfriend, Ariana, your life partner for almost 10 years, feel like a cuckoo crazy person because you just couldn't tell the truth and respect her. Mm. To have an affair or be cheating or hiding things, you wouldn't also be so readily uh, giving of your stuff like that. Um, and so I yes, looked in his Sophie. messages. There was nothing weird in his messages. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, maybe you're being dumb, you know? And then I opened his camera roll and then that's when I saw what I saw. And I like busted out of the stall and there were like some girls in there that were just trying to go to the bathroom. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then because I didn't go to the bathroom, I thought they're going to think I'm leaving the bathroom and not washing my hands. I was like, I promise I didn't pee or anything. I just, and then I just ran out of the bathroom and went straight up to him. And he was like, oh, hey, do you want to go smoke a cigarette or something? And I was like, yeah, I do actually. And it's funny because there's a photo of him that I've seen like used in articles and stuff. And it's from literally the moment I was walking up and his arms like this. And I see that photo and I'm like, that was literally like the moment before. And then we went and then he was very, we went straight out to the back behind Tom Tom. That's when I confronted him. What the fuck is this? Okay, wait, pause for two seconds. Yeah. I feel like no one is saying. Uh, so we're hearing here. Here's a picture from Ariana uh, during this podcast, the Call Her Daddy podcast, wearing her merch born fucking cool. Uh, I mean, just the worst feeling. And then you're in the bathroom, you're in your, your, you know, life partner's freaking business that he owns 5% of Tom Tom. And also the fact that, I mean, kind of relatable as well to go out of the stall and go, but I'm not like disgusting. I did. I do wash my hands. I just, I didn't do anything in there. <laughs> and she probably has to think of that because a lot of us would react that way. But also the fact that she's, you know, like a public figure, if she does come out of the bathroom and doesn't wash her hands, people are going to send out anons about that. You know, they're going to be like, Ariana's nasty. She was uh, patient zero for the covert 19. I mean, so that part I thought was even in all this pain, she's able to, uh, to have these like little anecdotal moments that are actually very relatable and funny. But you guys, you are so right in the chat. Sophie, I love your comment. Entitlement breeds monsters. Yes. And he had all the entitlement and all the privilege. Being specifically what the video is. Are you guys not legally allowed to be talking about what the video is? I don't know. Axie can, <laughs> I don't can know. Can I say what I'm speculating? Yeah, I sure. can say. I think the speculation is in the camera roll. There was a screen recording that he screen recorded while they were on FaceTime of them having FaceTime sex. That <laughs> and Ariana's like this. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And I think I know is what it was, but you don't have to confirm, but just to give pe people context that they have no idea about this drama. I'm sorry, but FaceTime sex sounds so boring. It sounds so dry, so gross. FaceTime sex. I mean, this is what we're doing with technology is we're banging people. We're not supposed to be banging in our other 45 year old friends, dirty ass apartment in North Hollywood. That's what we're using this great technology for. I mean, let the AI monsters or AI bots just ruin us. Just we're in the matrix. Yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. how you would. You live under a rock. <laughs> but that, so you view something like that. Yeah. Can you just take me back in the stall? It's bring me to the moment where you come mm -hmm. across realizing he's cheated on you with Raquel. What were you thinking in the stall? I was like shaking, like full body, like just like, I don't know if it's anger, shock. Like I think shock is a big part of it. Because, I mean, I've been cheated on in my life before and I've, you know, caught somebody before like that and like way in my past. And I guess it's like that feeling I hadn't felt in like, we're talking like 15 years and like, it's hard to describe, but it's literally like a combination of shock and anger and somehow disbelief that this is like. Oh, and if you've ever been in that situation, you know what Ariana's talking about because it is, it's that feeling of your life just imploded. Your life just changed forever and you have to somehow make a decision. You can't unsee what you just saw and everything is blown up and you have, it is, you are in shock. Cause I know when it happened to me, it was like, okay, uh, 
I saw it. All right. I know it, but also I want to throw up, but also now I have to like give up my apartment. I really like because I couldn't at the time afford it on my own. And my, I remember telling my ex like, but it's almost Christmas and my parents are coming, you know, and it was like months away, but I was, I knew I'd have to give up my nice little two bedroom, two bath apartment I had going at the time in my twenties. I was like, I'm killing it. And I was so pissed. I I'd had all the reactions and then I like threw it a, his watch, I think. And it just was, it's, it's overwhelming to find out that your worst fear in that relationship is that this person is lying to you and this person is trying to really make you feel like they're they're being cruel and they're trying to make you go crazy you know yes thank you witness it's shock it's surreal because you're just like okay everything i thought i knew is now different and i can't go further in my life pretending that this didn't happen i mean i'm sure some people, maybe they could, but I think most you can't, you, you're going to have some kind of reaction. And then all of a sudden shame, there's a sense of shame too, because, you know, for me, I felt like a failure. Um, I had grown up in the Midwest. I had moved out of the Midwest. Everyone I knew by that time, I was, you know, 29 years old. Was I 29? Yes, I was 29 years old. I had been with this person most of my twenties. I, everyone I knew was basically married, already having kids. Uh, my parents were high school sweethearts. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a complete failure. I suck. I have to start over at 29. And at, you know, now I'm 43. And I'm like, dang, that's a baby age, you know? But at the time you're, you're just like, holy shit. And I felt a sense of shame be for that. And I felt shame for, you know, why wasn't I good enough? Uh, I just, you just feel all the things and it's just horrendous. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Yes, but it's almost Christmas, but it wasn't. But still, it to me, it was like, my parents are coming. We have plans. This is the life I've chosen to live with you. I've asked you a million times if, you know, you were being unfaithful every time because I had feelings. You know, I there were things. There's, there were signs. And Ariana even says there were signs in her relationship with Tom Sandoval. And you know if you've been in this situation. And if you have one of these people who some deem to be, you know, I'm not a psychologist, but it seems very narcissistic behavior over here. Like Lala was saying, you know, about Randall where, you know, they, you can't keep them in the house when you're together. But then when you break up, you can't keep them out of the house. So it's this weird control thing. And it, it's just like, just let the person go. Why would you want to F with someone's mental like that? So I totally, when she explains the situation, I hate it. I hate it for her. I hate it for me. I hate it for any of you who have been through it. I just hate it in general. I hate that these things that, you know, we have to like process these type of feelings when I, it's, it's, you, it, it's unnecessary. That's the only word I can think of. It just, it doesn't need to be that way, but here we are. Really what you're seeing. Um, and yeah, and then like, there's just, I don't know. It's, it's really like a, a huge mix of emotions. It is. And sure. like, did you think this was a one-off or did you immediately think this has been a relationship? I mean, there's no way that it could be a one-off given the closeness of like all of our relationship to her. You know what I mean? So there's, there's no way. And also to feel so comfortable doing that on a FaceTime, you know, there's no, there's just no way of, of it being like a one time. Oh, we just decided one day to FaceTime sex. Like, <laughs> right. you know, like, like, drunkenly. I'm like, who should I call? Well, I'm going to call Raquel and just like. I love that. Yeah. You're, he's not going to talk you into the fact that it was a one-off because you literally, like Ariana said, are so comfortable FaceTiming, making videos, putting shit out into the cloud. Like that shit lives out there forever. And that's what I just want to tell any younger people. I mean, do what you want to do, you know, have your sexuality. If they, I, and I understand I came from a generation before, you know, we didn't, I didn't have cell phones until, you know, like cell phones weren't really, I mean, until I was like 20, maybe. So I understand now, like everything is like sending, you know, sexting and all that stuff. But I'm terrified of it because it just ends up out there. And you're like, well, who can get this? I feel like freaking Dick Cheney is going to be jacking it something. You know, I, is he still alive? I have no idea. But you know what I'm saying? Like someone real gross <laughs> is going to find this stuff. It's kind of like how I feel about my my foot profile, apparently. We've talked about this before. If you guys are new to my channel, uh, someone collects pictures of people's feet and there's a website and they rate them. 
I have a relatively good rating. Don't want to brag, but I also want to brag, which makes me think I should go to Foot Finder. But I was, my husband looked at it the other day because he thinks it's hilarious. And he was like, oh, and I've told him, I'm like, I'm gonna do Foot Finder. He's like, no, just think of all the gross guys. Like, do you really want to? I'm like, well, I do kind of want extra money and it's just your feet. But then I actually thought, I do think too, though, like there are men out there who are just looking at my free foot profile and doing God knows what. So I'm just, I'm scared. I mean, I guess they'll just, you know, men will really jack it to anything. I feel like there's a niche, there's a, you know, not to kink shame, but there's a kink for everybody, but it's like, ooh, I just, I just want to be paid. You know, I'm like Ani DeFranco. I want you to pay me for my beauty. I think it's only right because I've been paying for it my whole life. All right. That's that's what I have to say. Yes, 440 watching. Hit that like you. I know. Just think of Dick Cheney masturbating and you will never get an erection again. You know, a woman. You will never get a lady boner again. I made wiki feet. I don't know how, but there's always new pictures of my feet. And then one of the pictures isn't even me. It's my friend Allie Pat, who probably has way cuter feet than me. So she might have brought up my profile score. But yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you start confronting him. What does he say? He was very, he wanted us to get into a car. He wanted us to get into an Uber and leave immediately. He was starting to call a car and then he took my phone and then I was trying to get my phone back and, you know. So Tom, so she finds out Tom, then they get into, they call an Uber and he just wants to get out of there because he's terrified that anyone's going to see or find out that he's now a cheater, that Ariana has found this FaceTime video of him diddling himself allegedly and Rachel Raquel diddling herself. And he saved it on his phone, which is freaking creepy. And I do want to hear from Rachel Raquel. Did you consent to him screen recording that, Rachel Raquel? Because if you didn't, girl, press charges on this dude. Press the charge house because I don't care how much you effed up. We cannot let men um, or anybody doing this. But in this case, a man get away with uh, this kind of non-consensual porn, uh, saving it to his phone. Because if you just agreed to the FaceTime, I believe now I'm no Emily D. Baker. So you'll have to check with her for this kind of genius. But if you did not agree for it to exist past that FaceTime, I feel like you'd have a case. You know, I think maybe I will go to law school and I'll be a revenge porn lawyer and I'll help all the women get justice. But um, that's just so gross. So Tom now has taken Ariana's phone from her. How dare you, sir? How dare you touch her phone after this? Because as she will say, is um, he was worried that she was going to go post about this because she was like, oh, I'll put it on Twitter. And at that time, I mean, you're just saying anything because your whole world is just rocked. Walking down San Vicente with my phone, I was in like boots with a peel. So I was like, whoosh, like freaking Usain Bolt being like, I need my phone back. Like, why did um, he take your phone? Because he thought, because I was like, oh, I'm going to tweet about this. I mean, obviously I'm not. But you know what I mean? Like, you say things like that in those moments. You're not like, of course, getting, I'm not calm about it. You know, no. I was freaking the fuck out. Yes. Um, and he was very concerned about people hearing us. Because obviously we know all, we know a lot of people in West Hollywood. We know a lot of people at all the different I'm bars. So sorry, money, money. Of all these bars, and he was very concerned about people finding out. And I was like, I don't care. Um, why would I care? Who am I protecting by doing that? So do you both get in a car together? Mm -hmm. <sighs> and where do you go? Home. Home. Oh. What happens in the car? And when you get home? So in the car, we were. Ugh, I hate it. I hate that they have to go home together because I know that feeling too. It's like, it doesn't just end when you find the stuff. There's just, a, there's a process. There's questions that have to be asked. If you're in the same home, you, you have to sleep there probably unless you go to like a friend's house or get out of the situation. But ultimately, they're, they're, you just can't, you just can't end it right there. And so now she's in the Uber with Tom Sandy Butt. And she's going to tell us about adventures in Sandy Butt cheating. Ugh. So I called Rachel during all of this, um, after I got my phone back on San Vicente, um, I called her and that's when I was like, if you ever gave a shit about any woman ever, about me as your friend, about literally anything, you need to tell me like when this started, whatever, like tell me, I was hysterical. Um, and she said, that's when she said the part about like after the girl's trip and I was like, you mean when my dog died? Like when Charlotte passed away is what the girl's trip was. Like the fact that that is not even on your radar at all right. in describing this. Um, and that's when Sheena came up and that's when Sheena took her phone and then said, I'm going to call you from my phone. I'm throwing her phone in the gutter. She so Ariana has now found out her boyfriend's cheating. She found the, the recorded FaceTime video of him diddling himself and Rachel Raquel 
um, diddling herself. Sorry, I know you hate the word Natashki diddle, but I just love it. Diddle this, diddle that. And um, so she found that it's her really good friend. They get in an Uber together. But before they get in the Uber, Tom takes her phone. So she has to chase him while she's wearing heeled boots down San Vicente in Los Angeles. And finally gets her phone back. They get in the Uber. She calls Rachel Raquel to find out what's going on. In the process of that, Rachel Raquel is in New York with Sheena Shea. They just did Watch What Happens Live. And Rachel Raquel had that now infamous moment where Andy asks, who's the hotter Tom? Sheena says Sandoval, thinking Rachel Raquel will say Schwartz. And Rachel Raquel says Sandoval. I 100% believe, in my opinion, that Rachel Raquel wanted this affair out. I think she was tired of Tom not making a move and breaking up with Ariana. She wanted Ariana's spot. She was like, you know what? Because even in the reunion, you see Rachel Raquel in the trailer, in her, you know, little um, <laughs> shitty shack she has to be in because she pressed charges on Sheena or she didn't press charges. I mean, she <laughs> filed for a TRO, temporary uh, restraining order. Um, and she wants Tom to answer the question about why after like the first time him and Rachel Raquel hooked up, why he didn't just tell Ariana and break it off. And Rachel's like, I want to hear the answer to those. And James is like, I'll kill you. And she's like, I want to know why I want to hear this. And you're like, why are you so calm? This is very strange behavior, Rachel Raquel, but she definitely wanted it out there. So I think even I've watched that clip over of Watch What Happens Live. And I've watched it quite a few times. And the way she says, Sandoval, she's just like, I'm doing it. Sandoval, I love him. And I'm like, ooh, deliberate. She called me from her phone. I get in the car. Sheena's on the phone with me. And then he gets in the car. And now he's on the phone with her. So all, all four of us are on the phone together. And it's literally like, why are you caring? Like, why are you on the phone with her? Like, who gives a shit about her right now and then that's when he, he was just very dismissive um very defiant this is a dismissive of sheena's friendship to me and to him in that moment like it was very much like just and the poor uber driver was, we should get him in here i know <laughs> i remember at one point we stopped and got a pack of cigarettes because i was like i want to just i want to drink him and change you know what i mean of like course. gets that you're i'm like one of those nights like right. please and he went into the gas station and I was just in the phone, in the car with the Uber driver at that point. And I was just like, are you hearing this? <laughs> and the Uber driver was like, yeah, man, this is kind of <laughs> <laughs> The Uber driver was like, whoa, but he like, gave me five star. Bro. I was like, so, <laughs> yeah, like, it was just. So you get home and. Oh my God, that Uber driver. I mean, imagine I just couldn't be an Uber driver, period, because people gross me out and I could never pick up drunk people because I. I don't like that uncertainty of what they're going to do. And it would scare the shit out of me. But he's got story. Write a book, sir. Or ma'am. I think she said he, though. So write a book, sir, of uh, what happened that night. Or like a short story. A long essay. And we can now call the trailer a uh, traitor trailer, Natasha. And that is where... Um, Rachel Raquel is hanging out. So they're stopped at the gas station. They're picking up ziggies. We know Tom Sandy Butt loves a cigarette. Lots of the VPR cast uh, loves the smoke, which doesn't surprise me in the restaurant industry. Uh, lots of people. I mean, a lot of people smoke. So uh, she's going and she's like, I just want to chain smoke. She's still processing this. She's now talking to Sheena, who's with Rachel Raquel. The Uber driver's there. Yeah, let's keep going. This is the part I think I've seen the world be so fascinated because you guys live together. Mm -hmm. You own a home together. Mm -hmm. So you both go home that night. Mm -hmm. And is it just like a screaming war till like you fall asleep? Essentially, yeah. Do you sleep in the same room? No, no, not at that point, no. So you sleep in a different room. And like when you're by yourself, like what were you thinking? Oh, I mean, well, I made sure to text um, close friends of mine and of his because I was like, I am not going to be in a position where, and luckily because of the Sheena of it all, like at least it, I was like, no, we're not keeping this a secret. Other people knew. Yeah, so I was making, like texts were slowly trickling, like what is, what is happening? Are you kidding me? I mean, I didn't sleep. I mean, I didn't lay down to sleep until maybe like 6 a.m. That was how long we were like going at it, I guess. And he was just mad at me. Oh, the nerve of this guy to be mad at her. 
Every time I hear that, that pisses me off that he is, you know, being rude to Sheena, dismissive of their friendship, dismissive of his re whole relationship with Ariana, and then just so inconvenienced by the fact that he got caught, which is such now that we've watched Sandoval enough seasons and we've seen his reaction this whole season and now on the reunion, it tracks. It completely tracks. Hi, uh, Vic Star. Hi, Australia. That's also I, when I've been cheated on. It's like when someone that has been keeping a secret for so long gets called out, mm -hmm. all they've been doing is lying. And so I feel like their natural response is lean in harder to like trying to gaslight you, trying to distort your reality, like trying to make you feel crazy. Some also Ariana was so smart in that moment to let friends know, to get the word out. Because like you guys were saying in the chat, a hundred percent guarantee, obviously this was plotted as you'll hear from Ariana later in this podcast. It was workshopped what they were going to say to Ariana. So who knows? I mean, he was 100% going to put out some kind of bullshit, false narrative to paint Ariana as a monster like he has tried to do since the news broke. It was like, I'm going to shame her mental health. I'm going to blame her. She didn't give me sex. You know, most people will understand that. I mean, God, what was a guy supposed to do? I didn't get enough vagina. So of course I'm going to go cheat on her, you know? Um, so he would for sure put out some just bullshit. You know, he thinks he's so smart, sir. You are not smart. You're not a smart person. You're, you're not smart. You're not smart. Not you're not smart. You're not smart. You're not smart thanks a lot rachel thanks a lot thanks a lot rachel thanks a lot oh and like not take accountability and somehow you're like how are we fighting how are you yelling at me like you fucked my best friend yeah and i'm like screaming crying throwing up in this moment and you're just like annoyed oh so god this is like we talked about that feeling and she's she's going through it she's screaming crying throwing up you know the whole world is rocked and he's like Ugh. God, I just had a great show with my karaoke band. God, it's like I can't have anything without you ruining it. You can just hear this idiot. <laughs> like, I can just hear him and his stupid excuses. God, these are my favorite glitter pants. You just, you know, you just didn't tell me that you liked my matching glitter suit enough. God, Ariana, Ariana, like, dude, like, seriously, like, oh my God, like, I'm in like a karaoke band. Like, seriously, can't be quit. I shout into the microphone. God, Ariana. I end. And what we do know is, like, when this happened, you guys were not filming anymore. No. So how long after this happened did the cameras finally get in there? So this was Wednesday night. Yeah. And so it was Friday morning that cameras were at my house. Because what I could notice, oh. because we've all been through a breakup like that, is, like, the conversation in the finale that we watched felt more like a breakup yeah. than, like, post morning like literally go fuck yourself like yeah fuck you. there been that little bit of that back space. and forth yeah the final conversation between you guys it was infuriating i think for the nation to watch because he's blaming you being like i lost my mojo we never had sex like i wasn't myself i wasn't happy and he was quite literally taking no accountability whatsoever okay. for his actions what was it like sitting there listening to someone as you're hurt try to deflect all responsibility for what they had done uh, it was awful. It was brutal. But it was also what he had been doing for that past 48 hours up until that moment. So I almost kind of like knew that that's where he was headed. But then listening to it in the moment, not knowing what other people around me are thinking when they hear it, I'm like, is this, am I, you, like you start to really question your own sense of reality. And this whole thing had me, like I did not at that point, like that 48 hours, especially that night, that Wednesday night and that Thursday day, like and going to that conversation, without having any other like witnesses or, and also being in this position where it's like my partner of nine years and one of my best friends, like I, my sense of reality was gone. Like I just did not know, like. Uh, it must've felt like she was in some kind of trance or something. Cause all this stuff is happening. Now you find out cameras are gonna get picked back up. The world is gonna know the thing that I think Ariana feared, you know? I, and she'll admit to that is that, you know, uh, she did want to protect Sandoval. She loved him. Uh, did she know that he had some indiscretions in his past? For sure. Did, you know, he ne not necessarily tell the truth. She knew about Miami girl, you know, him and Kristen's relationship, but you know, her and Sandoval were friends for quite a few years. And I think at that age, I know I've been guilty of it. You think, well, you know, I'm different. It's not gonna happen to me. It's not gonna happen to me. So it's such a good lesson in if he does this to her, he'll do it to you. 
there is there it it does no once you have established yourself with a pattern of cheating no one is going to be able to break that pattern it has nothing to do with the woman it has nothing to do with anyone they date they're just a freaking cheater and they should stay single and they should just hit it quit it and move on with their lives and get a good group of guy friends and that's how they should live. They shouldn't put someone in a relationship and lie to them. I shouldn't say put, but they shouldn't invite someone into a relationship and then lie to them, okay? Cheaters are going to cheat. Yes, she was probably in survival mode, Natashki. So it's, ugh, and I mean, I think of having to then be in front of the camera. I know they're used to it because they're, you know, on this reality show for 10 seasons, but still, it's like, I imagine this was Ariana's biggest fear because not only is it the betrayal, you lose the guy that you love and that you really believed in, but also you look stupid or you think you do. I don't think she's stupid. I think she loved this man. I think she thought uh, more of him than he could deliver. He's weak. Um, but all these people will say, we were right. We told you about it. And who wants to hear that from like, the whole world what was up and what was yeah at that point. yeah you were very vocal this season about defending tom and raquel when people would come to you and you like had their backs if someone would have come forward i know this is a hypothetical but if someone would have come forward and told you about the fair do you think you would have believed them or do you think you had to like see it yourself to believe it i think i would have believed it if it was told to me off camera or mm -hmm. if it was told to me you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. i think to some degree a lot of what i felt was rumors and rumblings was which has happened before people being like okay i heard a little something about something but i'm gonna bring it up because that's our job is you know we bring up everything that we hear about and a lot of times it's nothing and i was like well if it's nothing i'm not gonna have like my friend and my boyfriend be like dragged through the mud I get yeah so that also adds another layer to when ariana says you know she didn't know if this was real life she because you're on this reality show so there's tons of people that you know you to stay on the reality show you have to stay entertaining and sometimes that means creating drama and creating stuff that isn't necessarily true we've seen this happen on a lot of reality shows and it's been the downfall of a lot of reality shows because they come off very contrived and that's been the great thing about vanderpump rules for many years until around i don't know season seven season and eight when they started just throwing people into the mix and we we're like huh um is that it was very organic it felt real these are real relationships real friendships people who had a history with one another not just thrown together saying okay fight for the tv um so i get what she's saying that if someone had told her off camera and not used it for their storyline she would have believed it because you have to remember you know you'd, you'd be like well are you just saying this because you need a storyline and are you just saying this because a producer told you to say it? I mean, that would be very Bachelor-like, uh, where they're just like creating these scenarios and having uh, people deliver lines to create conflict. Thank you, Joanne. That's very generous of you for the super sticker. What you're saying, it's almost like being on reality TV for so many years, you become almost more accustomed to, this is obviously for content, this is for the show, this is for the show, this is drama, this was like, you're not actually gonna believe that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. So if it was genuine, it would have come off camera. Right, or would have come, yeah, it would have been a friend who's like, I'm gonna end up bringing this up on camera. But I need to tell you first. But I need to tell you first because I think it's actually yeah. real. And yeah. I think that that's something that like my close friends would have done. Okay, so I got it. Yeah. Okay, I do want to take a step back because as much as we're talking about like in the weeds of like this affair, mm -hmm. you were in a relationship for nine years with this man mm -hmm. and you guys were friends before you got into a relationship. Oh, it's like most of her thirties. I hate that. I loved my thirties because I was free of that. Oh, girl, it's okay. You still got your light. You got lots of time. I mean, I don't know why I said it like that, but I just hate that. He, that I feel it's like the person when you're in a situation like this, like they robbed you of time. And that's the part that just, freaking sucks but you got lots of time and you know you'll look back at this eventually as and maybe i think even now ariana kind of looks back at this as um not a good thing but she can see the light in that all these opportunities have opened up she is no longer having to worry and she also doesn't have to freaking babysit this dude she doesn't got a dick sit anymore you know because he he can't even put together a coherent sentence he doesn't he needed her she did so much for this man she basically wiped his ass because when you see him at these reunions he is a mess he can't control his emotions he's aggressive he's irrational 
And she tried to help him and rein it in and understand him. And she spoke for him in a way where you're like, oh, okay, I guess that since Ariana, she explained it and it makes sense. But Tom is acting weird. That mustache is moving funny. I don't like it. What was it that first initially attracted you to Tom? Ugh. I just thought he was so earnest in everything that he did. And I found it really like endearing that he would be over the top in making a cocktail or over the top in just everyday parts of life. Like I thought it very endearing and, and sweet almost. Um, and I also thought he was a really good friend to the people close to him. And I thought that that was a really good quality. Yeah. How would you have described your relationship with Tom to someone? I would have described it as like, we used to call each other like apocalypse buddies, you know, like the person that all shit goes to hell. And this is a person that you can rely on that you want with you. Who's going to continue to like make you laugh and get through all of what life has to throw at you. And like, honestly, that breaks my heart because I feel like that is what you want in a partnership. I always talk about that with my husband. It's like, we have all these experiences now being together since, you know, uh, 2010 that, we we have this whole life he knows who i know we have these stories we it just it, all these experiences we have inside jokes and i you know feel like when if the world blows up we have each other you know and through the whole weird twists and turns that life will throw at you he's there and when i think of like the most awful things that can happen i can always go to him and he's my person. He's my partner. So this apocalypse buddy thing, my heart breaks for her because that is something I feel like a, a couple would have like a little name for each other. And that's kind of what you want in your partner. Oh, fuck this guy. Even right up until me finding out about this affair, like even during while the affair was going on, we were still like laughing together, you know, having like our little, we had so many like little inside jokes and things like that. And I mean, if you were to go through like either of our camera rolls, you would see just like so many even during the affair, amazing, fun memories together. What was your sex life like in the beginning and then like as your relationship progressed? I mean, in the beginning, I was definitely struggling with, I was very excited that someone was like really, I thought really into me because the relationship I was in previously, um, that sex life was fine. But at the same time, I was being like criticized very heavily about my body, my personality, just everything. Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, this is somebody who's like really into me. And so that was very exciting. And I think that our sex life waxed and waxed. I think that's very relatable for women. What she just said is very relatable if we all think about it, because women from the day we get nubbins, little, little baby tits, we are judged. We are judged for our weight. We are judged for how big our tits are, how small our tits are, how long our tits are, how big our nipples are. It's just how big our asses are, how big our thighs are, you know, what our face looks like with makeup, what our face looks like without makeup. So there's so many times that we're not told we're good enough. We're not told we're beautiful. And there's these standards and expectations that we feel like we have to live up to through, you know, societal pressures and conditioning that men just don't have to live up to, especially straight men. And so I get that finally finding a partner who truly feels you're beautiful. That's the time when you can really open up and enjoy sex and enjoy intimacy with your partner, because otherwise it's, it, there's a lot of insecurities that go along with being a woman. Um, and that's due to, you know, just all the pressure being put on us and all the competition. And it's just, I mean, look at all the products, you know, my husband will say things like, gosh, you just, you have so much stuff, you know, you just, oh God, you take up most of the closets. It's like, yeah, if, because that's who they market to. They market to us women. You think I want to be a fucking shopper? No. But since I was little, they were like, buy this bitch, buy this bitch, buy this bitch. Like they just have been marketing to women. They've decided to just, you know, it's like, and with the pink tax, there's like, you know, our stuff that, you know, is more expensive and they've created, they've conditioned us to be these consumers. And obviously not every woman, you know, uh, are, fall into that, but they definitely want every woman. And that seems to be their, um, their goal. So when men are like, I all women do is shop. It's like, yeah, bitch, because that's who they market to. That's who they want out there. And you're welcome for keeping everything moving and money in your economy for keeping it alive. You are so welcome that I have to go to TJ Maxx every week and buy something new. And I am helping the economy. Someone should give us awards and not judge us. Thank you. But overall, I just understand what she's saying in that moment of you finally find someone and you feel freaking 
you feel free and you feel beautiful. <sighs> Aimed at different points. I definitely think that, you know, it got to a point sometimes where, you know, I just wanted that quality time so bad. And I just think that in my mind, I thought, well, if we get through opening this bar, if we get through all this stuff, like then we'll be able to have all this time together. And I felt like he just was adding more and more things to his plate. And I just didn't, I don't know. I felt like, I'm like, oh, well, he's just not into me. Yeah. It's um, like you lose the connection almost. And I think that's something, cause there's so many things you just said. First is from your past relationship, going with someone that was very vocal about things they didn't like about you or your body or your personality, like that takes a toll on your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So then to meet this guy that's larger than life. And, and it just sucks that some guys are so okay with criticizing their partner's bodies and they're so toxic that that's what they get off on it's like dude do you never want to get laid is that the goal of this relationship so her ex which she's talked about on the show seemed like a gosh darn monster you know just criticizing even the look of her vagina that's why when anyone especially when other women we shame each other's vaginas we're like roast beef and stuff it's like first of all roast beef is delicious second of all arby's doesn't get the credit it should even though it might be horse meat i don't know don't get mad at me arby's um but we got to support all vaginas they're all beautiful all women are pretty and beautiful because we're gonna have enough toxic dudes tell us we are ugly af we're gonna have enough marketing tell us we are not good enough we need this skin cream and why do you have lines on your face i don't know because i'm in my 40s now and that's what happens to the face and i don't want to shoot shit in it just yet just yet funny and jokes and is so into you it's like i totally understand that yeah. allure and like you feel like alive and like happy and good with yourself in the season, I think probably one of the hardest scenes for women specifically to watch was that scene with you and Raquel, mm -hmm. where you open up to Raquel as your friend at the time. Again, to people watching, Ariana did not know about the affair yet. And you voice that you feel insecure about your body mm -hmm. and you say, you know, why would he have, want to have sex with me? And for and watching her speak to you knowing she was fucking your partner is so painful to watch. Mm -hmm. But I, when I watched that, I felt so bad for you because I'm like, did Tom not make you feel confident and make you feel good? It felt like, you know, he would complain about frequency of sex and it felt like he wanted to have sex, but I was like, but do you want to, I guarantee this dude could not get a boner enough to be, he said he wanted all this sex, but he's banging it out with Rachel Raquel. How is he? Mm -mm. He is one of those dudes. He cannot do multiple performances a day. He is maybe a one performance every other day. He is very much over uh estimating his performance he's you're living in pretend land thank you moria moira for the super sticker i appreciate it and roast beef is delicious so quit acting like that is somehow like a a dig at women's bodies sex with me is it about me or is it just about the act and that's where i was like okay so but what is it about he wasn't really great with like the words of, you know, like descriptors. I was like, be specific. Like, what do you like? You know, right. like, like, what do you like about me? Yeah. Like I need to know those, like, I want to know those things. Or I would be like, okay, well, do you like, you know, people have said that they think I have a nice ass. I don't know if I agree with that, but do you agree with that? Do you? And he would like be very turned off by the idea of me, like, being like, can you, do you like, right. like that? Because it's not all about him. Notice how she's like, okay, say something. I mean, who doesn't want their partner to be like, ooh, you're hot. Like, I like this about you, nice ass, baby, you know. Um, but it's not about Tom. So no one can have a better ass than Tom. Tom's like, I got the best ass. Like, Ariana, Ariana, what about my ass? What about my glitter butt? And Jessica, I'm super happy for you that um, you kicked his ass out. Beat it, loser part of me or like what are the you know right and i think that it wasn't coming necessarily from a place of like he didn't like my body i just don't think he knew how to express or maybe it's just a disconnect there and like yeah love languages or how to like click in that way because i, I get what you're saying but i also to any fucking guy listening to this <laughs> is like when your partner is so clearly being like i need some reassurance i don't know the last time you've given me a compliment mm -hmm. but it's also like a hey wake up like you want sex well, why would I have sex with someone that I don't know the last time I felt like pretty in front of? I mean, like, can you objectify me, maybe? <laughs> Thank you. Like, fucking hot, right? Or like he would say things like, "Oh, nice outfit." When I was naked or changing, he'd be like, "Nice outfit." And I'm like, I get the joke, but like that's not it's not connect. That's not gonna like no really get no. me there. Wow, Tom, it looks like you didn't lose your mojo. It looks like you never had it. If that's what you're saying during sexy time when she's naked, you're saying nice outfit your birthday suit, <laughs> throwing in dad jokes. Okay. You're lucky Ariana ever slept with you, bro. 
Something that really pisses me off is when men try to justify their cheating by being like, but we weren't having sex. Like I need to get my fix somewhere. And like, it's so often that women are deemed as the problem. And of course a guy went and cheated, like you weren't having sex, but it's like, but why weren't you having sex? And so was there ever a point where Tom or like the situation, as you kept hearing it, like we weren't connecting, we weren't physical. Was there ever a point where you were questioning, was that your fault? I mean, I think in the past I would have been inclined to do that, but because I was, had been in therapy and for years at that point, I knew and couples therapy with him, by the way, and the couples therapist literally sat across from both of us and said, this is a him problem. This isn't a you problem. Um, Tom, you missed telling us that part on the Howie Mandel podcast, sir. A trained specialist of the therapy said in front of you to Ariana, this isn't your problem is your problem. (laughs) Funny how you laugh that part out. (laughs) Oh my goodness. No, there's certain things I have to take accountability for in the relationship. But when it came to stuff like that, it's like, no, this is something that he's going through that he's dealing with. And don't take that on yourself. Like, just please don't. Because it is my inclination to be like, I'm not enough. You know, we all have that lie that whatever the big lie is that we all tell ourselves, mine is the not enough. Tom Sandoval's new song. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Fix yourself, Tom. Fix yourself. Fix yourself. Like uh, Nini and Sheree, fix your face. Fix yourself. And the therapist was like, please don't do that. Right. This actually has nothing to do with you. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I got to rewind just what she said. to be like, I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have that lie that whatever the big lie is that we all tell ourselves, mine is the not enough lie. And the therapist was like, please don't do that. Right. This actually has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Oh my God. I love this therapist. I love you. Whoever you are out there, if you're watching, thank you. Thank you for doing such a good job. I know hindsight is obviously 2020 and it's like, you can look back and try to, but like, were there any signs of red flags in the beginning of the relationship that you now see? I think in the beginning, it was like, you know, he likes to go out a lot. Um, and I thought that that was just like the phase of life that we were in. Um, and I would have thought that nine years later, we would be in a different phase. I think I'm in a different phase of my life. I still like to go out and have fun. I go to festivals, I party, I have a good time. But like, as far as like going out during the week, just for the hell of it it's not anyone's birthday it's not, you know it's not like a dinner and drinks it's just like a that's just not where i'm at anymore and i thought that we were in that that's normal behavior for people once they enter you know their late 30s well into their 40s or 70s like tom sandy but um you i just saw Jax and Brittany were on sheena's podcast and even Jax himself i mean allegedly he's real sleepy too i will tell you once i turn 43 i need more sleep and so i went out this weekend and i told my husband we got to invest since we have a new house we have to invest in a big grown-up bed so we got ourselves a tempur-pedic and it gets here thursday and i cannot wait okay because i i need my sleep if i don't drink anymore i haven't drank for you know over 10 years um but if i don't get enough sleep i will feel hungover like I did in my drinking days. And I drank a lot at that time (laughs) and would feel very hungover. Um, But I feel, so I get that. And so Tom still wanting to party this much is definitely a red flag. Um, When you see it, you don't want to be the old guy at the club. I mean, every stand-up comedian uh, of the 90s has a joke about that. You just don't want to be the old guy at the club. You don't want to be getting down, you know, Tom. I mean, he's he's going to be getting down to like Ja Rule or something. I mean, that dude is old. He's old. So he's, you know, he's listening to, you know, he's like Mas- Master P and stuff. And, you know, he's he's like, can you play Ghetto D? And they're like, we don't know what that is, Grandpa. We don't know what you're talking about. So uh, now you're just the old dude at the club and you're creepy and you should grow up. And like I was saying, Jax was like, I can't even, I can go out like, maybe once if we do a date night i can't double up and i'm thinking wow jacks used to be remember he would like shot 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 shots where's the vagina like he was really partying phase together and then we would come out of it but i feel like he never grew up he didn't really yeah when you look back i know a huge (laughs) conversation on the internet is your relationship with tom started by him cheating on his girlfriend Kristen. you guys kissed he lied to you and was like i'm not with her anymore but then it turns out Kristen was like we were fully together so and people are like oh you lose him how you got him like he cheated on Kristen. he cheated on you like how do you feel 
looking back at how your relationship started and how people are now like, are you that surprised? Like he did it to Chris and he did it to you. Well, to be very clear, I didn't lose him. He lost me. Oh, so she is just, uh, what doesn't kill me better run is a great line. And now she says, and to be clear, I didn't lose him. He lost me. Cause that's the truth. She knows where he is. She knows exactly where he is. She left. She's like, no, goodbye. See, see you later. No. So she didn't lose anything. You're, it's all win. It's all, he lost a prize. And there will come a time when Tom is in the back of the club going, can you play back that ass up? Whatever, you know, fam on the week, what you make? And then they're like, oh, call me big daddy. They're like, ew, what are you talking about, old man? There will come a time when he is crying, if it hasn't happened already, in the back of the club with a uh, Jaeger Red Bull or something very um, cliche in his hand. And he will realize that this was such a mistake for him. But then he'll shortly after that justify it somehow. But there's times, there will be times, these moments of clarity. And he knows, he deep in his soul, deep, deep in that dark soul, he knows, he knows what he did. Jennifer, thank you for the super chat. I went through the exact same thing and was blamed for a uh, same reason. After 10 years and two kids, oh, Jennifer, I'm so sorry. Intimacy isn't that big of an ask and neither is not sticking your D in all. Yes, maybe that's just me. No, it's not a big ask. It is definitely not a big ask to tell your partner, please don't put your genitals inside of someone else's genitals. Just fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And if you want to, then there's a larger conversation to be had. Okay. Um, and we can just be adults about that. You don't have to just give me all the chlamydia. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, that's right there. Sorry. Um, but I think that I trusted in him so much, even like as a friend back then. And I trusted him so much like during our relationship that I trusted his perspective on things. And I think that I was caught up in Whatever he told me, the, the, whatever it was that he was telling me was what I was going with. That, that's not to say, like, I'm a smart girl. Like, you know, I could have dug it deeper, but I didn't. Um, Kristen and I are very close, and I love her so much. And their relationship, as she will tell you. I mean, how many times do we have to hear it? Kristen has said it a million times. Kristen Doty has said, no, I don't think uh, this is a similar situation to what happened between her and Tom. No, I don't think this is payback. I don't think this is karma. What me and Tom had was BS. We should have broken up years and years before. We were both cheating on each other and we were a mess. And she is feels for Ariana so much. And I understand what Alex, the call her daddy host is asking, you know, she's of, you know, red flags and it is important to uh, pay attention to those things. I remember my dad with my ex, he'd be like, red flag, Jolene, red flag. And I was like, okay, dad, whatever. Um, but they are, and it is important to pick up on red flags. A lot of times hindsight, but if you can be cognizant in the moment to be like, mm, that doesn't seem right. Like literally trust your gut on that and know that if this behavior, you're seeing it early in the relationship, uh, it's probably going to be throughout the relationship. So, but this constant conversation, I see so many comments too about, you know, well, Kristen and they cheated. Kristen herself said, no, it's not the same, but yet we're, we're still, we're still trying to blame Ariana. It's like, well, it must be the woman's fault. I mean, she wasn't having sex with them and, you know, she did uh, make out with them in the golden nugget pool while he was technically still with Kristen, who was technically having sex with Jack. So whatever. <laughs> it was very toxic and. There was a lot of cheating on both sides there. Whatever. I love her. She's amazing. She's a very strong, incredible woman. And she has become like just such a force. Um, I think that it's something that just goes to show that that's kind of maybe just what he does is he says things like, I tried to end it or I'm, mean, you know, things like that or, oh, we're broken up or things like whatever it is. I what an unoriginal dork. I mean, the fact that this guy uses the same line 10 years later, oh, she just doesn't respect me. She doesn't want to be around me. She recoils at my touch and oh, we don't have enough sex. The same thing he said about Kristen. It's like, bro, talk about, you said James Kennedy isn't an artist because doesn't change his hair. You don't change your excuses for being an awful human being. You got to uh, Google. Don't they have, what's that AI thing now that everybody's using? where you just type in like, I need a better excuse for cheating. 
or I need a new excuse for cheating and they'll AI generate you on bro. You don't got to keep using the same thing. That's how devious, that's how much he believed in himself being able to get away with this. Ugh. We'd like to think that maybe this thing that's happening right now will prevent him from ever doing that again with any other person, just because I think it's time to put that little right. tactic to bed. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah. When you look back, I'm just thinking- Thank like, you, Candy. Do you think he's a pathological liar? I mean, it's hard to I mean, clearly in the last seven months, he was a pathological liar. Yeah. It's now hard for me to look back at nine years. And if I tell myself he's a pathological liar, then I mean that the last, last nine years of my life were potentially a lie. But he did say oh. stuff on that finale episode to Sheena, like, we weren't happy and we bought the house as a band-aid. I'm like, a band-aid to who? Because that wasn't where I was at. Oh, yes. Then if you have to be like, wow. Tom's a pathological liar, or my ex is a pathological liar, then it's almost like, was this all a lie? Was this all not real? Is this a joke? And this is my damn life. Uh, an epic, great comment. Victims of narcissistic abuse are often shamed for speaking out and are told to shut up and move on while the narcissist isn't condemned for their actions. And we're already seeing this within the media and within Bravo. In my opinion, when we get this whole like, you know, guys, we're being really hard on Tom. I think he's a guy. I mean, if you look at Andy Cohen, what I read with page six and what he said on the um, Not So Skinny, what's her podcast called? I apologize. Um, I just can't think of it right now. But what he said, he totally downplayed it. He's like, okay, yes, what he did was dumb. Yes, it was, uh, it was just all the words. But guys, sir, it is airing in real time. Now is not the time to move on. Also, be worried more about, is Ariana okay? Did anyone worry that maybe, I mean, Tom himself said, even though she says it's a lie, but Tom himself said that she was threatening to take herself out of this world due to uh, this news or if he left. So maybe you should spend more time checking on her. And also the long-term ramifications of this are what everyone's like, Ariana's killing it. And she is, and she's got all these campaigns and she's got all these, she's booked and busy, but there will come a time where things quiet down and they settle in and this will have a lasting effect. This will hurt future relationships. I am, I am, however, very glad to hear she's in therapy, has been, did a bunch of work on herself. And so she's very much an evolved, progressive human being, um, and so I have very high hopes for her, but how can you come out of back to back horrendous relationships with this kind of like toxic behavior and abuse from your partner and not have some scars and carry that with you? So there will be a time when this could and probably will uh, very much sit with her, live with her. This is, you know, something that she'll have to continue her therapy for. This will affect, like I said, her future relationship. So I'm far more concerned with Ariana, not the guy who's just worried that people are, you know, mad at him, you know, not the guy that can't control where he puts his own wiener. I'm less concerned with him and l quit with the whole, um, you know, dramatics, talk about women being dramatic, but uh, these men, very dramatic, sticking up for this guy. They can't even let him have a moment to be accountable. They're like, he might hurt himself. He has not mentioned one thing about that. No, he hasn't. He's online reposting articles, praising his shows or saying that his shows are almost sold out, even though I, <laughs> okay, I'll have to wait a minute and see the proof myself because people who were there are saying mm, wasn't necessarily sold out and some of these tickets are free. So let's calm down with that. But um, I'm far more worried about uh, Ariana and the other women that he hurt and will continue to hurt with this kind of behavior. And also again, what about Rachel Raquel? She's in the mental institution. Her parents said she's getting death threats, allegedly, and the FBI is involved. But we're worried about the guy who's shirtless on a stage screaming incubus into a microphone when he can't sing and charging people money. I think he'll be okay. I think he's going to be okay. He's going to be just fine. He's going to be just fine. At all. <laughs> um, or things like, there were a lot of things from his perspective that have been said in that episode and otherwise that it's like, oh, okay, well, that's maybe how you were thinking, but that's nowhere near where I was. Right. And also we're in a relationship. So you should have shared that to me because I would have loved to know that because I probably wouldn't have bought a house with you. If you were like, just to be clear, babe, this is a band-aid. You've been like, the fuck? Like, I've been like, 
okay, well maybe we should fix our relationship then now and do that right. and not do, yeah. Couples therapy. Mm -hmm. um, you and Tom got into couples therapy this past year and after he started the affair after he was alone at that point i didn't know that but so yeah. when you got this freaking liar on harvey what is not harvey mandel <laughs> harvey mandel on the deal or no deal guys uh podcast telling us and we tried with therapy and i brought you brought her after you were banging rachel raquel her best friend sir shut up shut up <laughs> you go in and he claims he initiated it is that true initiated a couple therapy. therapy yes but it had been brought up by one or both of us okay. over years of being together. Yeah, and it's since been revealed that he got you both into couples therapy as part of his eventual plan to end the relationship. What explanation did he give you as to like why he was so gung ho ready finally for couples therapy? I mean, he was just we got into an argument one day. Well, you saw on the show we had that conversation on the couch, um, and it was that conversation and like one other one. Way to wait until you're putting your dick in someone else to decide, you know what, sweet pie, we might need to do couples therapy because you're not touching my wiener. Well, your wiener's getting touched enough, sir. It's getting touched too much. Do you ever hear the the saying, if you touch it too much or let someone who's not your girlfriend touch it too much, it'll fall off and die and start on fire. That we have where it was like, I think we should go to couples therapy. I was like, absolutely, I would love that. We should do that. But it was those things and those conversations that led us to that, yep. to going. Um, and I remember specifically one session because we would do joint and we would do separate. And in my separate sessions, I was doing inner child work. I was sobbing with her. I was, I mean, I felt like I was making leaps and bounds. And he even said, oh, we went to couples therapy and our relationship got so much better. Right. That's but like, well, it's like, well, duh. Right. <laughs> Right, like it's almost like a little counterintuitive that if he actually had the intention of ending it with you, why the fuck are you going to couples therapy? I remember even saying after one of them, I was like, okay, so there was a session where it was, it got really intense. It felt like maybe we were ending. And at the end of the session, she was like, okay, so is this, you know, a breakup? Are you guys? And he was like, no. So that's where it's like, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Can so, you, do you mind sharing like when, when you guys are fighting, like, because obviously you're not fighting about the affair, what were your issues in the relationship? My issues is that I felt like he was not choosing me over like random nights out or that he just wasn't coming home. Like he would want to just be at Schwartz's for no reason. Well, now you fucking know. <laughs> just, you know, having beers and whatever. Or And FaceTime effing Rachel Raquel. I mean, Schwartz doesn't even own a vacuum, I don't think, from the looks of his apartment. And then you got, where's Joe at this time? Is she in Schwartz's room? Where's the creepy Joe that Katie says creepy Joe? It's going to get a cease and desist on. <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts of the reunion is when Tom Schwartz had the gall, the nerve, the audacity to tell Katie, you better quit saying stuff about creepy Joe. She's going to get a cease and desist. Oh, not a cease and desist. Oh, my God. Welcome to the club. Coming home and then, you know, I'd wake up and I'd be like, where are you? And I would like go down. He's just downstairs, like having smoking time. cigarettes and probably... But like he's smoking in the house ariana oh my god are you really it's 2023 so you have a huge backyard and you live in los angeles where the weather is pretty much always nice there is no need to be yellowing up those walls you know what i mean it was right. just like the absentee boyfriend without and the i have to do this for work I have to, you know it was just everything was coming before me and before the relationship and i felt like and i needed that connection and that stuff that right. all that stuff in order to be physically intimate and I knew that physical intimacy was something that he was you know what that is so interesting that she says that because I think that for some of these guys especially on this show um it seems to not matter that there's a connection with the woman they're having sex with um it seems as long as they're kind of feeding their ego uh the woman is and they're just present that's all they need you to be is just kind of there and I heard Jax on Sheena's podcast uh just recently within the past week or whatever him and um Britney and he was talking about when he was cheating with faith and the way he described it was was gross to me um I get that he might have done work on himself I still I don't know I, I'm not following the dude I'd want him to come back drag Sandoval and then go back to adult life um I still don't trust him but that's just my opinion you guys can have your own opinions I know some people believe he's completely reformed and you know I hope for Britney and the kids sake he is but I don't know I don't know um, but he was like, it just didn't matter at the time. And his exact words were, it could have been a hole. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. but I guess that's where the glory hole stems from because women, I, I've never seen a glory hole in the bathroom, but apparently you guys, there's a glory hole. I don't know what's so glorious about it. Uh, you can get a splinter. 
I, wall. I mean, why would you want to put your dick in it? Okay. So when he said that, I was like, oh, and it makes so much sense because I feel like that is Tom. He doesn't feel like he needs to connect with Ariana. He's like, Tch. Where's the hole? And it, it's just, it's yucky. So it just reminded me of what Jack said in the interview. And he was, you know, in his defense, you know, he was saying that was how he thought, but I'm like, how gross that you even ever thought that way. He's like, but I, I just, he did say he disliked himself so much, but it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just getting really tired. And you guys know I'm opinionated um, of men using us when they feel shitty about themselves. It's like, get some therapy, get some help. Okay. Quit trying to ruin our lives and use us because you feel bad. I just needed something. It could have been a hole. You know, I just felt so bad about myself. Well, then go talk to someone, go get on an antidepressant, go get some weed, do some, do anything other than use a woman as your coping mechanism, because we're not here to save you. That's something else I heard in the Sheena interview she did on shenanigans with Brittany and Jax. I didn't like it. And some people might like it. I did see in the comments, some people really liked it. Uh, Brittany, Jax had said, Brittany saved me from, you know, she got me and she, and it's like, but we're, our job as women, I'm tired of it being the narrative and it being us being conditioned to think that that's somehow a flex or that is somehow our job to save these dudes from themselves. No, go get your shit together and get healthy. Why do we always have to be raising the baby men? You know, that's not our job. It is tiresome just because we might one day, not everybody might birth or adopt a child and raise a child does not mean that we want to raise our partners. So when he said that and they were all kind of like, oh, that's so beautiful. Mm, not really. I think if you're already, I guess if you're already in a relationship and your, your partner goes through a hard time, you're obviously going to help them. But to think, she had to struggle. She had to be cheated on. She had to be humiliated uh, so that you could grow. And her purpose, like she had to save you. Ugh. There are professionals that do that for a mere copay. I know the healthcare system is aft in this country, but Jax, you're fine. And he was laughing. So like, I don't know how I can meet you where you need to be when I'm not being met where I need to be. Like, how do we figure this out? Right. It's almost like you both couldn't it, it was a circle. It's like, no, but come home earlier. He's like, no, but like, I'm miserable because we don't have sex. And you're like, but we need to hang out in order to have sex. And it's just like, it, like what I said on the show, I was like, I can't teleport your dick into my vagina from the bar. Because if you're at the bar and I'm at home, like I'm here, you know, maybe I'm ready and you're just not there. So how do we do this? Right. Like, like we can't actually physically do this if you're never present. Like, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So Tom did mention on that Howie Mandel podcast, like things did shift. You started to make an effort. Like what did you making an effort in his mind do you think look like? I think I just was doing my best to be present and going out with him more and trying to be more fun party time gal. Um, you know, I was just trying to be, I don't know, like fun and hot. I don't know. Right. Dude. And like, how the fuck did you feel when you were Thank doing you, that? Thank you, Linda. I mean, part of me was just like, I mean, this is fine. I, Cause again, I was still doing like that inner child work and it was, you know, I felt like that was really helping you just be like, I love myself and I'm, you know, doing, I mean, not like, really changed. I love that so much for Ariana that she was doing this personal work in therapy and this inner child work, which I don't know what that uh, entails, but it sounds very interesting. And she was feeling really good and loving herself. And I think this all probably led to her feeling confident enough and trusting her gut to check that phone and ultimately dip out of uh this relationship so i love hearing that the therapy has been so beneficial to her um when tom wanted to like weaponize it against her like there's something wrong with her and instead i mean that's how much she wrote and for this guy and loved him is that she was like hey yes i'll do the work as a couple i'll do the work as an individual i love you i want the best for our life and i want to be my best self for me but also for a relationship. I mean, that's, you don't get much better than that. Yeah. When you say doing inner child work, like obviously share what you're comfortable with, but like what was something that you were like really struggling with that was clearly like you felt bleeding into your relationship that you were like, I'm going to work on this shit. Cause like, I want to be whole and good with myself. I think like the sense of perfectionism, because I mean, I love my dad, but my dad also like 
didn't come home after work and stuff. And I was always like straight A student, super overachiever. And I think like going back and looking at it, a lot of times I did those things. I mean, maybe because I wanted people to be like, I'll be there. <laughs> so I thought like if I could be the perfect girlfriend or the perfect girl that they'll come home, they'll want to be around me and I'll be enough. I won't have to be me tap dancing, doing shrooms and hang gliding. I can just be me and that will be enough. Is it, is it? And that's something that Ariana mentioned. Um, I don't know if it was in the reunion or if it was on, on this podcast coming up, but um, that, uh, or maybe it was in the finale, that of course he's hooking up with Rachel Raquel because she doesn't have to have responsibility. She's a 28 year old. Oh, she does say it in this podcast. I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but I'll ruin it if she's going to say she's a failed pageant queen, 28 year old who doesn't have to wake up for work in the morning. So of course you can do shrooms and you know, you're 28 compared to someone in their late thirties, who's trying to run businesses and do business and, you know, be responsible and get sleepy at a earlier time in the night. So, but Tom Sandy, but he doesn't want to grow up. He just wants to literally do shrooms. Who the frick does that much shrooms besides like the Grateful Dead. I don't even know if they do it or whoever. But really, who does that much shrooms? And also shrooms, like I've said before, they're supposed to like open your mind and, you know, like the ayahuasca and shit. And for like true creatives and all you used it for was to buy glitter pants, do sit-ups and have sex with people you weren't in a relationship with. Like you really ruined um the shrooms experience. So I don't know. It just, <laughs> just like, it's all this guy in, in hearing Ariana talk about wanting to be like the cool girl. And, you know, she was going out of her way. It appears to make him happy, even though it was out of her comfort zone. Cause she's like, Oh God, do we really got to be out all these nights? I mean, Tom is clearly, in my opinion, running from something. He is running from adulthood. He is running from responsibility. He is running from fidelity. He's running from monogamy. He's running from success because look at how he is spread out. And this is very ADHD. And I can say that because I'm ADHD, you know? And by the way, what I mentioned in the breakdown of the part one of the reunion about Ariana commenting on his Adderall and did he take his Adderall? Uh, what I thought she said was what she said because Alala put it in her stories and she said that she had watched the reunion on Peacock a hundred times and she noticed that or she commented on that Ariana did mention something about him and his Adderall and being shaky or something. So, but it is very uh, a tune with someone having ADHD to kind of, you know, and maybe who's not, doesn't have the right treatment plan. And it's just something you struggle with, with ADHD is like spreading out all these things instead of just completing the one thing. It's actually, you know, very difficult and very frustrating. And you see that with Tom and he's just running, self-medicating in my opinion. And uh, that's why he owes his mom money. He owes money with the house because he's like, I'm going to open a strip mall bar, but I can't just do that. Now I got to be a karaoke singer, even though I can't sing, but I can't just do that. Now I have to have another relationship, even though I'm in a relationship already, but I can't just do that. Now I have to be hanging out at Tom Sandy Butt's house or Tom Schwartz's house, even though I have apartment, even though I have a whole home. So it's, um, it does make sense as an ADHD person myself. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of spreading makes sense. But, and also as a sober person myself now, and as an alcoholic, I'm like, oh, he's definitely, in my opinion, self-medicating and running. This partying is just him running, running, running from uh, really like fixing himself and his life and doing the work that will help him in the long run. Like Ariana's doing the work for herself. Um, that's going to help her in the long run. He's fucked. If he, if you better get with it, because you can't run forever with shrooms, because age, age hits everybody, and eventually, you. I don't even know if they let walkers in the club. Can you? And I'm not talking about the the Walking Dead. I'm talking about like a a walker. You know? I don't know. I don't know. If I guess, yeah, maybe he can get wheeled in. I'm not sure. But there's going to come a time where you can't party this shit away. And, ooh, that's going to be rough. Oh, fuck. So when you get into therapy also, you're like, oh, my God. Like, is it this obvious of, like, I, I'm dating a version of my dad or, like, I'm dating a ver You're like, how did this happen? Like, yeah. my dad didn't come. Tom's never fucking home. Like, my yeah, I mean. Mims, shout out to my friend Mims. Make it make sense is in the chat. Are shrooms legal? 
I don't know. I don't know. And did the shrooms cause his face? <laughs> what caused his face to prematurely? You mean prematurely age? He should run to some moisture as well. He smokes and he drinks and he parties and he's in his 40s. And we all, Mims, don't turn 40 because it's, <laughs> it's going to be a little rough. It's going to be a little rough. But we love Mims. If you're not subscribed, Mims is killing it. He's on his way to 50K subscribers. I, I hate to spell, speak ill. I love my dad. He's a great person in so many ways, but he would you know, sometimes just be like, okay, well, there's a random dive bar down the street. I'd go do that instead of coming home and helping with homework. But it also makes sense, Ariana, because weirdly we are attracted to things that are familiar to us. So it's like, if that is- So Ariana just made a very interesting point. I mean, this was, when I first heard this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking telling. And oh, my mom <laughs> is in the chat. And by the way, she loves Mims. Um, and she says, shrooms aren't legal. Thank you, Nana. Nana, if they were legal, Nana would be, she'd be out there with- Sandy butt popping shrooms, okay? Because she's already trying to get at the weed. And I'm like, no, Nana, we're sober. We're sober sisters, okay? Uh, <laughs> but this is so interesting. So Ariana is going to tell us something that we didn't have previously known. And we didn't know much about her dad. We knew that he passed when she was young. Um, we knew that obviously that was just such a huge loss for her um, at a young age. I think she was, what was she in like her early to mid twenties when he passed? Uh, I'm just guessing it could have been teens. And, um, but now we're hearing that, you know, I'm going to let her say it again, but that her dad had as much as she loved her dad, he often was running away from the home and was, you know, absent in some ways. Of like, I, I'm dating a version of my dad or like I'm dating a you're like, how did this happen? Like, yeah. my dad didn't come home. Tom's never fucking home. Like, my, yeah, I mean, I, I hate to speak, speak ill. My, I love my dad. He's a great person in so many ways. But he would, you know, sometimes just be like, okay, well, there's a random dive bar down the street. I'd go do that instead of coming home and helping with homework. But it also makes sense, Ariana, because weirdly we are attracted to things that are familiar to us. So it's like, if that is what you were growing up with, weirdly, you're like, oh, I fucking got this with Tom. Like, I know how to deal with this. I know I can how do to do it. The that is why it is so important when it comes to behavior like this, whether it surrounds addiction or neglect or anything, to break these familial patterns, to break these familial, um, I don't even know if patterns is the right word, but uh, cycles, I think is, is, is the better word, because it gets carried down generation to generation. So Ariana seeing behavior like this from her own dad, um, it, it's, it's good for her to recognize because then maybe she won't seek that out in the future because we tend to go after um things that are familiar to us it's the same way that you know i mean there's a little bit of nature and there's a little bit of nurture in everything and whether that's with just again using the example of addiction um it's a little bit of both in that as well and the behavior you see and is tolerated growing up is probably a behavior that if you don't recognize, which is hard to do, or go to some kind of therapy, um, is probably behaviors that will repeat. And that's why just in the case of like addiction, it's important to break the cycle of addiction in a family because it'll carry on generation to generation. It's kind of similar, I guess, to, um, uh, you know, socioeconomics, like, especially I can only speak for in the US, but it tends to be if it's hard to break out of certain certain socioeconomic brackets, if you are lower uh, to middle class, and it's been generations and generations of that, you're probably that's what you're going to do. Um, so it's these similar cycles and patterns. So I found it so fascinating that Ariana had this experience with her dad, because we are often attracted to what is familiar, whether it's on a conscious level or a subconscious level. And I just find that very interesting because you can pick these patterns out and see them in the people you love the most and she, like her father. So she's constantly this seeing him, you know, run out to the dive bar, be a little bit, you know, absent in that way, maybe be a partier and she wants his approval. So it's only natural that she would find a guy then that uh, kind of has the same behavior. I think a lot of us can relate to that. Right. Well, like, mm -hmm. oh, I can do it right this time. Okay. I can kind of do it all mm -hmm. over again and be, and be better. And actually he'll come home, watch like all the, and then it's like, actually you deserve so much that's better. actually not on me it's on i'm gonna hear that again but it 
also makes sense, Ariana, because weirdly we are attracted to things. I, I hate to speak, speak oh my, I love my dad. He's a great person in so many ways. And that's the that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty I I learned in therapy. I think with our parents, most of our parents, they are just trying their best. They're going with what they learned from their parents and they have the best of intentions. I mean, not everybody's parents. I know people have told me horror stories about parents, but for the most part, I think, you know, our parents, they uh they they are only they can only do what they know to be right and what they've learned in the past. And uh, so with with something like this, it's like, you know, her dad, it's OK for her to say this. But I understand that feeling of feeling like you are talking bad about your parents or you are disrespecting them in some way. But it's like, no, you're not She's not saying my dad was a bad dad. She's saying this particular trait, this particular behavior my dad had was something that didn't feel great. And uh, it's something that now I recognize that might have affected my future decisions and a partner and things like that. And that's totally fine to recognize those things because those are the type of uh, things that you recognize that then will stop you from um, heading down that same behavior and that same cycle for generation and ge after generation. So I love that she is sharing this, but I also understand that that little ting, that little bit of hurt that comes with being like, am I, am I disrespecting my parents? Because I love them. And you know, when you're a kid, for the most part, not everybody's experience, but I think a lot of experiences are your parents are like your heroes. And then they're, you, you get to an age, um, maybe it's in your late teens, maybe your early twenties, where you realize that your parents are infallible, like, or that the parents are fallible, um, and that they're not perfect and that they're just humans. And so there's something that is, and that can, that can be a weird transitional period for your relationship, depending on the circumstances, but it can also be very therapeutic because any, you know, to process wounds for a lot of us, and, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but, uh, you know, there, there's a processing, but then there's also that bit of like forgiveness that can come from if, you know, you believe that your parent was just doing the best they could with the resources they had and with all their trauma. Cause we remember, we all want to talk about our trauma, but our parents carry trauma, their parents carry trauma. And that's why this kind of like trauma childhood therapy Ariana's talking about. Again, I don't know the specifics of it, but it sounds like she was processing this stuff. That's why it's so important and beautiful when people do this work, cause it's only going to help them and then future generations um, within their family and then people they date or, uh, marry. And it's so, I don't know, I don't want to geek out with this stuff, but it, I, it's really beautiful that she's doing this work and that she's so vulnerable. That's something that Tom Sandy, but will never understand that the most beautiful thing and the most, um, the bravest thing you can do is show your vulnerability because this world will tear you the F apart. This world will attack you and, so to be vulnerable and be that brave is beautiful because it will help someone down the way. Even if that's not your intention, it will. It will trickle down. Um, so to pretend that everything is okay um, is, you know, it's a lot easier to do. It's to just, you know, fake it, I guess. Um, but to truly be vulnerable, it's a hard thing to do. And you have to be freaking brave. And Tom Sandoval wishes, Tom Sandoval wishes he was this brave. I'm going to get la la about it. <laughs> He would, you know, sometimes just be like, okay, well, there's a random dive part on the street. I'd go do that instead of coming home and helping with homework. But it also makes sense, Ariana, because weirdly we are attracted to things that are familiar to us. So it's like, if that is what you were growing up with, weirdly, you're like, oh, I fucking got this with Tom. Like, I know how to deal with this. I know I can how do to it the, the right way. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I can do it right this time. I can kind of do it all over again. And be better. And, be better. and actually he'll come home, watch. like all the, And then it's like, actually you deserve so much that's actually that. not on me it's on no no, no. yeah you want someone that's actually wants to come home and you don't have to beg them to be like come on like show up be there right you said that you hadn't considered ending the relationship before all of this came out Were you so it looks like she was trying to you know get that approval uh from tom like maybe she wasn't able to get her dad to stay home and stuff but if she acts a certain way and if she does what she thinks tom sandy but wants then she'll be good enough for him to stay home for her. So that moment is like truly heartbreaking, but also awakening that she now can recognize that. So hopefully in the future, she'll say, no, 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 I am worth it. 
I don't got to dumb myself down or do shrooms or friggin' naked hand glide for anybody if I don't want to. If I'm not good enough as I am, then they're not good enough for me. And that's uh, plain and simple. And HC, this is beautiful. What you just wrote, Ariana adapts and evolves. Tom wants the world to adapt to him. I mean, that's perfectly said. Perfectly said. Truly happy in this relationship. I don't know. I think I was a version of happy that I thought was, I don't know what I wanted. And I also felt like the bones of the relationship were good. And I felt as though the potential for the relationship to be just incredible was there. And I think it was the potential and the, okay, if we can make it through this time, the Fred again song, uh, we lost dancing. I literally, the night that Tom or that Schwartz and Sandy's had the, like, their last like opening thing. I was driving Tom home and I was like, just listen to the words of this song. And in the song, when uh, I think it's the blessing Madonna says, if I can make it through this next six months, what comes next will be marvelous. And I literally was like, if you can get through this, if we can get through this opening of this bar and whatever, what comes next for us will be marvelous. Mm -hmm. And I, I just cannot believe that he'd already been having, at that point, he was already. Oh, Ariana, she really believed. She believed even like, I mean, hashtag relatable. I mean, I live my life in uh, song lyrics, I swear. And I get that from my mama. So shout out to Nana. But, uh, you know, hearing these lyrics, driving home and saying, Tom, this is us. If we can just get through this, get through this strip mall bar opening, baby. Because I know it must be hard opening a bar in a strip mall uh, with an exit or an entrance that looks like the exit. Yes. So she was so hoping and we saw in this season too her sitting while he's still trying to pick up the damn couch for shorts and skeezies um she's like sitting there hoping that they will connect and have some time together and he'll make time for her um and then it's like the whole time he's banging the friggin' failed beauty queen i don't know but it's it must be such a mind fuck where you're like, which I also want, because I know I've done it too, where like, I remember when I was getting cheated on and I didn't know it at the time and you're making such an effort and you're like, I feel so fucking stupid. Like how dare, and it's like, no, 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 you're not stupid. You were trusting the person you were in love yes. with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you also have to wrap your head around like, this wasn't your fault, but it's like also crazy now that you remember these details of you putting in so much fucking work and you're like, we've got this, Tom. My yeah. only question though is like nine years now, when you look back, cause you're like, oh my gosh, like I was like, you know, I was obsessed with like the potential. Like I really wanted the potential. Nine years in, if you're still fantasizing about the potential of what a relationship could be, do you now have any ability to look and be like, hmm, if I didn't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, or yeah. did you feel it in the first couple of years and then it dropped off? Like, was it always like this? I feel like things would kind of, they would, they would wax and wane. They would mm -hmm. be ups and ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we would have so many amazing times so then if there was like a couple weeks that were like not great or if i was like mm, unsure about something there was so much other stuff that was great or i would be like laugh we would be laughing hysterically about something or that it would i'm telling you alex from call her daddy she is a good little journalist i shouldn't say good little she's just young um I just was like, oh, she's such a good job. I mean, she's asked some good questions, good follow-up. She does her research. I'm very impressed by her. I've watched a couple of uh, her podcasts, and she's hugely popular and successful. But uh, I'm like, get it. I love it. Almost like I think hard to say, oh, this person's not right for me, because I also had never been in a relationship that long before. So it's hard to know, like, what is it supposed to be like? You know, because past, I, I think my – my my longest adult relationship previous to that was I think like three years or so. So it's like past that point, this is uncharted territory. Got and it. I'm thinking this is what it is. You know, when you're with someone for nine years, when you're with someone for maybe potentially 10, 20, right? Like a fucking decade, decades, you know, things are going to be hard sometimes. I get that. I actually think that's like really relatable of like, mm -hmm. you try to see the good because there is good. Yeah. But when it's ebbing and flowing, you have to like, you just have to stay strong. And you, time. you know that people say that that's how relationships are and they really are. They do ebb and flow, but there has to be a mutual respect. There has to be, both parties have to be progressing and willing to progress and willing to work on the relationship. Um, so unfortunately that was not the case, but I understand what she's saying, you know, just like, just like Lexi's saying the fail 
failed dream, quote unquote, is the most painful thing to accept and break free from because you have this dream of who you think this person is, what you think your life will be like, uh, what you think your life is, what you think your situation is. And then to be hit with the harsh reality <laughs> once finding out, you know, evidence of cheating or other, you know, different kinds of of, of deception, it's, it's crushing and it's hard to accept. And I think that's why, you know, we, as people, we overlook, you know, we'll overlook things because we want to believe in the dream. We want to believe that the good parts are that good and that, uh, it is what we think it is, but sometimes it's just not just have to make well, it because people it. say that who have been together for 50 years who have never cheated and yeah. have, like they're like the greatest love story of all time and you right. think like okay yeah they said that we had some hard times like sometimes you have a year that's hard right and i you know especially this past year i went through a lot and i felt like okay and he was going i felt like we were both on our own going through these things and so i thought like we'll get through this together because i mean i'm committed to this man and but you know he didn't he had a full other relationship going on. Right. This season, we found out a lot about your relationship. There, you had talked about like how at times you would go through his phone and he was open with you and he would hand it to you. Or then we found out on Watch What Happens Live, you were like, I had the iPad password. You fucking idiot. Like, they're always so stupid. Um, and Tom mentioned you guys were only having sex four times a year and you were living pretty separate lives. Were you lonely? Yeah, but no, because I had my best friend. So he would be so jealous of me hanging out with my best friend, Logan. Right. And, he and we heard that in the reunion. He was like, God, I feel like her gay BFF. Well, no, you even, you weren't her gay BFF because that was Logan. And you wish you could be pool culture, Logan, working at TomTom, Tom, but you're not, sir. Um, and we hear him say that in part one of the reunion. It's like, she just wanted to hang out with Logan. Ariana, like, come on, Ariana. I just want to hang out with Logan and watch Love Island. Well, sir, how about you start watching Love Island? I mean, initially I created Married to Bravo, which was a podcast that me and my husband did. Um, and now I do it, you know, with my mom and stuff. Um, and it was to get my husband to watch Bravo shows because he didn't like it. And it was a fun little project we did. Um, and my husband has watched shows he doesn't like so that he can spend time with me. And I've watched things I don't like. Do you think I would be a fan of Battlestar Galactica if I hadn't been in love? No, I would not. But now I am. The same way I was introduced into the world of the Matrix and Neo, the same thing. You know, there are so many things that the person that I love loves and I have to go, well, let me give it a try. I'm not going to like everything. But if it's a way for me to spend time with him and he for me, let's introduce each other uh, to our world. So you might hate uh, Love Island, sir, but I, I, maybe he hates it because he wishes that was his life. He wishes he could just be a constant contestant on Love Island, but I don't think anyone would pick him. I don't know if anyone would pick him, right? I love it. I love pool culture. Uh, so he wishes he was like, it's Logan, right? Yes, yeah, Logan, her friend. But he brings this up and you're so jealous while you're having a full-on affair. And all she has is like a friend who, uh, a gay man who's her best friend who just respects her and is interested in the things she's interested in. Probably listens to her, Tom. Did you ever try just list asking how she is and not having her listen to you play the freaking dick flute or the trumpet or whatever else you think you can play that, I'm sorry, but you can't. And that's, a, I mean, we're just being honest. I'm just being honest, like outcast, okay? Like, I feel like a third wheel when I go out with you guys. And I'm like, well, because you you go outside and you are mm -hmm. on the phone or you're doing, you know, you. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't want that for you. But right. so I filled that, I filled that absence of him not coming home and not wanting to do the same things that we wanted to do. And she thought she was doing him a solid. I can totally see that. There are tons of like friendships that I've had that I've been like, oh, like my BFF Jake, for example, um, which would be, I guess, my Logan. It's like him and I, we can do all the things that maybe my husband child wouldn't want to do. I mean, he does like hanging out with us, but there are things that it's like, oh, I know I can do this with Jake. Or I can do this with Katie. I can do this with, with this friend because you should have other relationships outside of your marriage and a whole life. And, you know, um, so she probably thought she was doing a solid to Sandy Butt thinking, okay, well, he's busy. He's doing his business, the strip mall bar, and he's, you know, singing and all this stuff. He's doing his thing. So I, you know, will seek out other friendships and people to, uh, you know, to fulfill myself as well. And also then I won't, I guess I could hear her saying something, then I won't like 
bother him, which it shouldn't be a bother, but you know what I'm saying? So she probably felt like, Hey, this is actually me just allowing him to, to finish all these things he has going on, which is why we allegedly can't spend time together. Um, and then in the six months, just like the song lyrics say, everything will be worth it. And we'll hang out together. I filled that absence with the most incredible people I know, which yeah. are my friends, which is like, such like also a beautiful thing that you had great friends but also kind of like does. clearly oh. a deflector of like instead of being like we why are we never hanging out i'm just gonna hang out with my friends which is great we love your friends right because he was going and doing that you know right. and it was just like and therein lies the control issue and the narcissism is that he still despite being deceiving her despite cheating on her despite having a whole double maybe triple life he still is so bothered that Ariana found a friend that actually made her feel good, that actually would spend time with her and do the things because then that was to him, not a good thing to see his partner happy and in a friendship. I mean, I, your partner should love that you have good people around you because you should be their priority. It's like, oh my gosh, I feel so good that my partner has great friends and a great group around them to really care for them because they deserve that because I love them that much. But that's not how fucking Tom sees it. Tom be jealous. And then Tom's like, oh, it's a competition. And he's treating her relationship with Logan. It then becomes about him again and like a competition thing. And it's like, bro, it has nothing to do with you. You have all these things outside of Ariana, but Ariana can't have one thing. It's the same way he acted about her book that then became, you know, he was involved in. It's it's the same pattern of behavior for him. Honestly, though, the separate lives comment, yeah, to me is just so not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, to some degree, maybe, yeah, but when you're saying, like, I have to work, I'm trying to open this bar, and, oh, I have to go to dinner with Schwartz and Brett because we have to talk about the bar. And then, oh, I thought you were going to be home right after dinner. It's 12. Like, what are you doing? Oh, we just went to get drinks next door at Birds. You know, like, things like that. And it's like, okay, well, but then... If I, again, my camera roll and his camera roll, because I have it. Right. Um, if you look at it, it's, we're still, we're going to concerts. We're going on dinner dates where we are, there is some, there is effort being made somewhere of like, you know, right. Like, just felt like it just wasn't enough. Yeah. I no, I got it. You obviously mentioned you went through a rough year. You lost your grandmother. You okay. We'll get into that. Yes. Adams. Uh, I got my husband to watch Big Brother, which is my summer obsession, even though it's not starting till August this summer, which, you know, okay, um, is I would get my husband to watch some episodes and then, you know, he would come on YouTube and talk about it with me as like a casual because that meant a lot to me. And he's like, I want to do that. I want to hang out. I want to watch this shit with you because I care about you and I want to know what you care about, which is a totally healthy response that your partner should have for you. It shouldn't be an inconvenience for them to freaking hang out with you. Boss, your dog. I'm so sorry. How were you mentally grieving during that time? And like, so Alex just mentioned Ariana, a lot of loss this year, the loss of Charlotte, who I do believe was like the divine intervention that came down as well as her grandma. They teamed up in heaven and they were like, here's the deal. Allie McBeal, check this mother effers phone and do it now, girl. I real cause she says she's like, I'm not even a spiritual person, but it felt like some kind of divine intervention. And it was, uh, her grandma and Charlotte, her dog coming together and telling her the their spirit and i'm not necessarily a super religious uh faith-based person i person either but i think that sounds kind of beautiful what was your relationship with tom when you were grieving because i know you've been open about like when you lost your dad tom was there he was like your rock he was in it with you he was like the person for you and this time around was very different mm -hmm. were you so interesting that tom was there when her dad first okay so yes now i remember her dad in the when they were friends passed away so early 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 seasons maybe even pre the show starting okay and so they had she had that experience of him being so supportive when she went through such a tragic loss but that's when he wanted something that's when he could get something out of her but now that he found his needs and his ego fulfilled by rachel raquel he's like well i don't care who dies screw you Wow, Tom. Concerned at all? Or were you just like full grieving? You didn't even like give a fuck and pay attention? Yeah, I was full grieving because my concern, well, with Charlotte, my dog, um, he was there with me. He held her as we said goodbye. 
um, we literally said goodbye to her together. And then we went home and I put on my comfort movie, which is love actually. And we drank wine and we laid on the couch together. Okay. So when I heard her comfort movie is love actually, I obviously I've watched that movie. I do know now that, um, it's deemed as like problematic in a lot of ways. I'm not even sure how, because I haven't like rewatched it every year. It's not like my Christmas go to, but everyone's got their comfort movie. Like I would say one of my comfort movies is dream a little dream. Speaking of Corey Feldman with starring Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, which I just made my husband watch for the first time. It's just a movie I can throw on. I loved it as a child. I love it as an adult. It's silly. It's got its own problematic shit, but it's literally from the eighties. Okay. So those are certain things. My comfort show is Buffy the vampire slayer. I call it my Buffy blanket. Whenever I'm depressed, whenever I'm sad, that show gives me life. Whenever I'm happy, that show feeds me. It just does everything for me. A, a Buffy has helped me in a way that is therapeutic. I just, I've loved it since I was 17 years old and I rewatch it regularly. And I'm a, just a geek with just tons of Buffy books and uh, comics that some of you have sent me. Shout out to Jay Asco. And then I have like the Buffy encyclopedia. Like I, it feeds my soul. And I think we all should have that. I see some of you feel free to put your um, therapeutic uh, comfort in a movie or television show in the chat. We all have that one thing. Like you say, Titanic. Tammy says, Hannah Montana, the princess bride. Sorry, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Um, and comfort movie, Amelie. Oh, that's so, that's, no wonder you're so smart, HC. Yes, <gasps> American Horror Story season one is my other one, Teresa. Yours is Coven. I do love Coven. But um, Murder House, I don't know. It's freaking comforting to me. I love it. Every year, once it's like late August, I'm like, Murder House, Murder House time. But I also love Coven. So there's just those certain shows that you can just watch and they feel like a gosh darn blanket. Priya, oh, I love hearing what you guys are. Gilmore Girls, Golden Girls, what a good show. Law and Order, like ding, ding. Yes, Frasier, Frasier, Frasier. Oh, I love it. Will and Grace, oh, Flavor of Love. Oh my God, Drago, hilarious. Gil another Gilmore Girl, Charm School. Oh, I love Charm School. Oh, that was such a good show. Um, now, when she said that, it clicked to me. There's this scene from Love Actually that's always stayed with me. And Emma Thompson, I believe, is the actress. Um, her performance in this one scene, it's heartbreaking. When I first watched it, when the first movie first came out, I was in my 20s. And I was, I mean, around that time, I was with my ex who was a cheater, okay? And... I had had my, you know, just worries and things. I remember seeing that scene. I also remember Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind also was very, I guess now what the kids would say, triggering because I liked it, but I was like, uh, just with my, the situation I was in. Um, my mom says, leave it to Beaver. Yay. Yes, 100% my Buffy blanket. Yes, Evan, same, same comfort movie. Fried green tomato, steel magnolias. Oh, such good picks. Bones. I got to watch Bones because I do... Obviously, David Boreanaz because he's Angel, Three's Company, Emperor's uh, New Groove. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes, Adam, that's the scene I'm saying. Oh, my God. Okay, so there's a scene, and I'm going to play it for you guys. So I grabbed it off YouTube, and I think of it so regularly um, because it's so fucking beautiful, and it sums up Ariana. Ironically, it sums up Ariana's situation where Alan Rickman's character is uh, wanting to start, again, I haven't watched this movie in a while, but wanting to start a relationship with, I think, someone he works with, like a younger chick, and he buys a necklace. And Emma Thompson thinks, she she finds the necklace, and she thinks, I'm going to get this damn necklace. My husband, they have two kids, he's going to give me this necklace for Christmas. Once Christmas rolls around, she opens up her gifts, and she gets Joni Mitchell CDs. That's how old this movie is. We're giving out CDs. And as talented as Joni Mitchell is, that is not a gold necklace. That is not a jewelry. Okay. So she gets that and she's like, it's for another woman. It's for another woman. And her, her world is shocked because she knows now that her husband is carrying on, you know, or wanting to, um, there's just another woman involved. Okay. So this scene came to my mind immediately. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Ariana is watching this. This is her comfort movie. 
And maybe there was something comforting about watching this, um, but it is such a freaking beautiful scene. Okay, so I'm going to play it right now. If you were in my position, what would you do? What position is that? Imagine your husband bought a gold necklace and come Christmas gave it to somebody else. Oh, God. Would you wait around to find Good out night. if it... No, 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 no. Happy Christmas. Would you wait around to find out if it's just a necklace or if it's sex and a necklace or if worst of all it's a necklace and love would you stay knowing life would always be a little bit worse or would you cut and run god i am so in the room a classic fool yes but you've, you've also made a fool out of me You've made the life I lead foolish too. Darling. Oh, that makes me tear up. That scene, they're both such beautifully talented actors. The writing in that scene is wonderful. And so if you've never seen it before, obviously this is where she's, they're at the children's like winter play or Christmas show or whatever at the school. And this is where she confronts her husband, um, you know, and he's just like, oh, I'm a fool, a classic fool. And in that moment, her voice breaks and she's like, yes, but you've made a fool out of me. You've made the life I lead seem foolish. And it's like, that's what the frick happens when you're in that situation. All of this, which was probably 20 minutes before, you know, she found out about this gold necklace the most important thing. It's her husband, it's her children, it's her family. And then with one stupid freaking selfish decision, it's now her life is forever changed and your dumb ass now makes my life seem foolish and it's just such an amazing scene um thank you chicken head pk neely that happened to a co-worker and she was crying because oh her ex oh my goodness oh having an affair Kenneth. okay oh my goodness but i mean that is just like when her voice cracks she, she's like would knowing your life would always be a little bit worse would you stay knowing your life would always be a little bit worse and her voice breaks up and I'm like, oh. and it's true because what your reality that you had before this information and finding it out was so different than the reality you would be forced to live with now is that your husband isn't who you thought he was and he was so willing to throw you out and have a relationship or, you know, go after someone else. And, oh, it just kills me. So I'm thinking of her sitting there. In her comfort movie is love actually it's such a great scene uh love actually is the movie and yes r.i.p alan rickman like what a beautiful both actors let's watch it one more time and then we'll get back into it just because i just love it so much okay bear with me bear with me i'm like tearing up <laughs> if you were in my position what would you do what position is that imagine your husband bought a gold necklace and come Christmas gave it to somebody else. Oh, God. Would you wait around to find Good out night. if it... No, 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 happy Christmas. Would you wait around to find out if it's just a necklace or if it's sex and a necklace or if, worst of all, it's a necklace and love? Would you stay, knowing life would always be a little bit worse? Or would you cut and run? Oh, God. I am so in the room. A classic fool. Yes, but you've, you've also made a fool out of me. You've made the life I lead foolish too. Darling! Oh, and then the strength she has to have in that moment of just having to pull herself together for her kids, you know, as the, the mother of this family and having finding out this betrayal the husband admitting it and in that moment it's christmas the kids just did their christmas program and she's like and she's like darlings and i'm just oh how many times a woman has had to do that and put that smile on and 
do, you know, what's best uh, for her kids. So, oh my gosh. Okay. I'll quit being emo, but that one hits me right in the tits. Oh my God. And just like mourned together. And I, so I thought we were like fully on the same page there. I also know that like when it comes to, it was the summer, we do have to, you know, we have to film, we have to go do stuff. We can't just, we can't stay at home forever. And so a lot of times we'd be like, okay, well, I have to, I'm going to go film this, I, I, you know, boys night or this or that. And I was like, go do it because this is what we do. Yeah, and career. I, maybe I'm not ready for that yet, but you go do it. Exactly. Um, and so I definitely had no idea that, you know, he would betray me during that time. Cause I thought he was also grieving when it came to my grandma, I was so concerned with my mom. So I flew home to my mom and then I flew back, filmed the rest of the season which was like one week left. And then I flew back again to Florida and was there for like two weeks. It was during the hurricane Ian and everything. I just, I just extended my stay uh, beyond the service and everything. And I just, my concern was really just my family. When you were grieving your grandmother, isn't that when Tom and Raquel apparently were like at your house or something having mm -hmm. sex potentially? Potentially. Potentially. I mean, he, has maintained that that's not the case, but I don't trust what he says. Of course. They FaceTimed me, the three of them, they FaceTimed me that next morning, like before any filming or whatever. So I was already aware that she had stayed the night because she, it was like, hey, good morning. Yeah, I stayed the night. Like it, like it was just no big deal. Is that one of the most painful things for you aside from the actual fact that they were having an affair? Like the casualness of just like, hey girl, we're going to FaceTime you together and they're your best friends. So you're like, hey guys. And they like literally just fucked. Mm-hmm. It's the duplicitousness. It's like the. So as she's worried about her, she lost her grandma. She's worried about her mom. Cause not only did she lose her grandma, her mom lost her mom, you know? So she's worried about her. Tom's just fucking Rachel Raquel. And they're calling her on, you know, FaceTime. I'm like, Hey, what's up? We just had intercourse, even though we're not going to tell you that. I mean, it's just, it doesn't get more cruel than doing that when someone is going through the loss. So the first time he sleeps with her, the dog's dead. And then the grandma passes away. He doesn't leave the party and he's still hooking up and having an affair with Rachel Raquel. And he could give two Fs about either of those things. And he uses the show as a um, smoke screen or as an excuse to be out of the house. Oh my gosh. It's the backstabbiness. It's like less about like an affair. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's so layered. It's, it's just really bizarre as well. Like, it's just like, I can't wrap my head around mm -hmm. doing that. It's yeah. really twisted mm -hmm. and sick. It is actually. Tom claimed he tried to break up with you multiple times. Ugh. And your response would be, I'm not going to let you leave. You're going to have to force me. That it, there was only one. Okay. So we tried. Okay. He's talking about those conversations that we filmed. So the one on the in the brown and white, and then the, I don't know if that looked like try, an attempt to break up to that, you. No. It didn't look like it to me. And then there was another scene that didn't make it to air that was pretty much along the same lines. And that was where we like decided we were actually going to couple therapy or whatever. That doesn't, that's not an attempt. And then that was in September. So then we had literally all the way up until Valentine's Day. I'm like January, no. Valentine's Day is in February. Right. Okay. So I'm like, yeah. what a day is Valentine's Day? Where are we? Um, uh, Valentine's day, he got me flowers. We went to Schwartz and Sandy's. He pulled out a bottle of wine from our first trip we ever took together. So obviously also after we had celebrated our nine year anniversary at Muso and Frank's on January 1st, like full, you know, like we, we went out, we had a, our anniversary dinner, happy anniversary, like great night. Right. Like, like we, we were having sex in January. And that's where he took frickin' Rachel Raquel. The Muto and the Frankies, I think after the taping of the reunion or whatever that restaurant's called. I had never been there and I lived in LA for like six years, but somehow I just didn't ever go there. Um, uh, so as much as Tom's like, mm, we're not doing it. Um, he's still carrying on this relationship. He's still um, having sex with her. And that's what we learned in part one of the reunion of like, they were very sexual together and very intimate together in January. And then you see Rachel Raquel in her trash trailer and she's like, that's not what you told me. Yeah, here on side by together. Hey, what's, like, what's going on? I thought you guys weren't touching genitals, but apparently they were. I wouldn't need Tom to answer to that. Like multiple times. So like and he goes as far as like get her flowers and do the whole boyfriend thing. Why? Why, bro? If your intent is to break up with her, if your intent, as you say, was to 
you know, get out of this horrible relationship. Why are you doing the boyfriend stuff, you monster? So deceitful, like Aaron says, so duplicitous, so just disgusting. So to, also to confirm to everyone that's not following all this drama, it's like Tom really honed in being like, I was really trying to break up with her. Like I but was you're trying like sleeping in my bed and buying me flowers and we're going on an anniversary dinner and like, yeah, going a couple. And then, but I'll make uh, Ariana always remember when we're worried about Tom Sandy Butt's mental health here, he didn't give two shits about Ariana's mental health. He went through her right under the bus. He weaponized her mental health, made her seem, he tried to do that, you know, like she's like a crazy cuckoo, you know, which we're all crazy cuckoos. It's, it's that that's how the world is like quits. Um, uh, like villainizing people with mental health. I mean, there's already enough stigma around it. The fact that Ariana is on a television show and open about her depression and anxiety is actually, like I said, very, uh, it's a heroic thing to do because it can only help people talking about it because it's so stigmatized. Um, still, despite it's 2020, damn three, and it's still so stigmatized. Um, and so he's out there, you know, oh, she's going to hurt herself. And she said he can't leave and all this stuff. He is not worried one bit about her. So now I got to worry about this guy who's on tour with the shirt off with glitter on his butt. I'm not worried about glitter, but I am not worried about him. Andy Cohen, you cannot make me be worried about him. Therapy and all of that. So the, the Valentine's Day right. that he has referenced. Yeah. Um, again, got me flowers. We went to Ports and Sandy's for dinner um brought a super special bottle of wine that was special to us mm -hmm. um i got dressed up i put like little hearts on my face like he was like you look so cute um we went out for drinks later rachel showed up um as did a few of our other friends and then we <laughs> went home and we were started kissing and he was like i have to stop you and then that's when he we had this breakup conversation wait 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 <laughs> what <laughs> Okay, Kelly, first of all, hilarious. Read between the lines, Ariana. Ariana, like, you didn't stuck the batteries. Like, I was looking for paper towels for, like, 10 minutes. My assistant had to find them. Like, she always does. You know, I like Bounty, and you got Brawny. Come on, you're such a bitch. Such a bitch. Ariana, like, seriously. Okay, wait, so they go out for Valentine's Day. He gets her flowers. They go to Musso and whatever, Springs. And she's got little hearts on her face. They look cute. They come home. They're making out. And then he's like, mm, we have to stop. I think we should break up. What in the monstrous, most dramatic, you emo, melodramatic piece of shit, what are you doing to this woman? You sicko. Oh my gosh, I have to hear that again. Got me flowers. We went to Schwartz and Sandy's for dinner. Um, brought a super special bottle of wine that was special to us. Mm -hmm. um, I got dressed up. Okay, they went to Schwartz and Sandy's. Okay, got it. I put like little hearts on my face. Valentine's Day. Look so cute. Got it. Um, we went out for drinks later. Rachel showed up. Uh, Frank and Musso's was the anniversary dinner. Okay. Okay. Um, I just did a few of our other friends. Rachel Raquel shows up. Yuck. Get a life. Get a life, Rachel. That's not your life. You can't steal somebody else's life. You got to get your own, girl. And then we went home and we were started kissing and he was like, I have to stop you. And then that's when he, we had this break. So you've been wanting sex. You're saying sex is the problem. Well, it looks like sex is coming. And that's when you're like, I'm going to stop you. Mm. Conversation. Then at the end of that conversation, well, that was hours long. And the end of that conversation was, all right, well, let's continue this conversation. You know, when he was saying things in that conversation, like, the dumpling I think I, I'm having a midlife crisis. Like, and I'm like, absolutely. And I said, if we break up, I'm probably going to quit the show. I will probably. He's like a creepy love bombing yuckster. He just. It's like he wanted to fuck with her. Tom, you got to look into that. You need help, sir. The way you navigated this betrayal is betrayal on top of the betrayal. This is real messed up. Very, very messed up. You need it. Don't, you do not need to be on tour. You need to be at the mental facility. You can take Rachel's spot when she's done. Or you can go to a different one. But why is this man not being asked to go work on himself? We're so worried. He's not even willing. Why are we worried about his stuff when he's not even worried about it? He's not working on it. Ugh. Los Angeles. I will probably deactivate my Instagram. And he found that to be like very offensive. He was saying like, I, I don't know. Like I am was never saying that I was going to kill myself. I you know, it's so interesting. I, I watched an interview back 
of them, they were doing some kind of like sour challenge for delish. You can look it up on YouTube. Delish, um, they were doing like a question and answer. And if they both had done the thing, then they had to eat this sour candy and the, the candies got more and more sour. And there was a part, and this is probably four years ago or so. And there's a part in it where they ask the question, have you ever thought of quitting um, Sir or Vanderpump Rules? And Ariana said, yes. And Tom said, never. So this is a natural reaction for Ariana now that if th this relationship implodes and they're not together, she probably one of the main reasons keeping her there and on the show is her relationship. And so if that implodes, then she would leave. That's that's natural. And logging off of social media is actually a very mature and healthy thing to do when going through this. And we actually saw her do that when uh, their their breakup did happen as she got off Instagram for a while and um, allowed herself to she didn't want to be inundated with that stuff. And I don't blame her. So it is very interesting that that was his like, oh, my God, that's probably what he he took to him. He's like, that's death. And it's like, no, that's healthy adult behavior. Um, but the fact that, you know, he lives or dies by the show and she doesn't, but the irony now, this show you love so much, Tom Sandy, but, and that you had a perfect edit in, even though you were now, I mean, <laughs> you didn't deserve it, but you got it. You crapped the bed. And now Ariana, who reluctantly is kind of like, I guess I'll stay because everybody loves me now. And I'm the star. And you were just handed that, Tom. Ah, oh, and you effed it up. Oh, goodness. I was saying that my life, this life, will be over for me because I will go do something else. Oh, Tom, how you spun that to Mr. Howie Mandel, to the deal or no deal man. You spun that to when she said, this life will be over. I will go move somewhere else. I won't be in the public eye like this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go through this public breakup and stuff. You spun that into, she was going to take herself out of this world, you sicko. Oh my gosh. Um, hey, Warrior Warrior says, Ariana is actually lucky that they taped it. Yes. And she found out otherwise no one would have believed her, right? You're a hundred percent right. And that's so scary because he got such a freaking good cake edit. And he was, you know, one of the narrators on the show. And through editing and production, you know, when Tom Sandoval was explaining things, it was kind of like, here's what we want the audience to uh, believe. He was like the voice of the audience in a lot of ways, what they had him deliver. And what we know now, he wasn't sharing a bunch about his own life. He was mostly, you know, on some kind of moral soap soapbox. Like he was like morally superior, even though he was the most effed up out of all of them. So it is good that um, this happened like this. And now we're able to see like, holy shit, this dude. Wow. What he could have gotten away with. Crazy. I've been fantasizing about moving to like the French countryside since like this fucking child. And like, honestly, to be fair, like in the conversation, it's quite tearful. It was definitely not like a positive conversation. Right. But I'm not talking about physically harming myself. And given the fact that we had that conversation over many, many, many hours, he knows that that's not what I was saying. It's not just like one comment and then we stopped talking. So the fact that I feel like so many things that I've said, not just in confidence, it's just me and him. Like we could sit here and war of words all we want. It's my word against his word, right? Okay, right. That's fair. But at the same time, it's like, knowing me and knowing the conversation and knowing the conversations we had in the days after that, where we were still sleeping in my bed and we were still going to, con we went to a concert on February 19th and there's videos that he has of me like dancing in the living room. And, you know, so it's like, okay, so why are you sleeping in the bed? Why are we continuing to hang out? Why do we have any sort of relationship? If to you, now you're going to go on a podcast and say, Ariana knew we were broken up. It's just like, in my opinion, I was like, you know what? I feel great about us having this open. I it was really a rough conversation it ended with, let's keep talking about this. Um, the next couple of days, we had more conversations. Um, I said, you are going to have to, if you think this is over, you will have to be the one to end it because I'm committed. I'm actually thinking that this is like the potential for us to like be even, to be great because we're talking about stuff now that we haven't talked about yet. Like we've never really gotten this, this far down this road before. So yes, if you want it to be, if this is over to you, like you are gonna have to, like you have to do this. You're gonna have to leave. Like, that's not crazy. <laughs> that's it's, like a, like not all, I don't, we don't have to mutually agree upon the breakup. 
it, you know what I'm saying? Like, not only is it not crazy, Ariana, that was going to be my next question. Like, I think the whole world watching it when Tom looked at Sheena and was like, I can't break up with her because she's threatened to kill herself. First of all, my problem with that, even if you had said that, which I appreciate clarifying, but again, you didn't need to because it's like, number one, that's a huge fucking allegation to make about someone's mental health and to just casually say on a show when that's not the truth or it was the truth, shut the fuck up. It's so damaging and it's so hurtful as she's saying that someone she trusted and someone who knew, you know, the ins and out of her mental health because there he was with her on a, you know, uh, well, I guess he wasn't there on a day-to-day -day basis as we're learning, but someone who she trusted and someone she was vulnerable with. And that's just what I'm saying is, you know, people weaponizing her mental health and the person she trusted most used that to fit his narrative because he was too big of a chicken shit to take responsibility for his bad actions. So to get out of trouble like a freaking child, he weaponized her uh, mental health, which is the the height of disrespect of, I mean, it's just very disgusting. And um, uh, And put that out into the world while she was grieving this relationship and this betrayal and, you know, with her friend and to put that out there, like somehow that makes her lesser of a person or somehow that's like, yes. Oh, good. I'm glad you got away from that crazy bitch. Ugh, Tom Sandy, but you need to get off the road now and get into some inpatient, sir. This is real bad. Before. And I have been in, in very, my opinion, very dark places before. Um, so and she admits vulner her vulnerability is on point again. She has had suicidal ideation. She has talked to him about that. And yet here we are, him going on Howie's podcast and making up this lie, knowing her history. And like um, Empath Warrior said, uh, people would have probably believed it had we not had the cameras there and seen his real behavior. Mm. So then be flippant about it as if that's also something about me that makes me like deserve to be treated poorly is is pretty awful I think I couldn't agree more I also am like when you saw that clip how how did you feel I mean it made me angry yeah. obviously and what Sheena said was like such a great thing like even if that was exactly word for word what I had mm -hmm. said which no but if it was why did you do absolutely nothing to help at, at all? Like, why didn't you call my mom, my brother, my friends? Right. Instead yeah, Sheena, she answered it so perfectly on the finale. Is like, he went in there thinking he could win Sheena over. He thought he could win the whole group over with his lies and excuses and this narrative he was trying to push. And yet Sheena's like, no, I don't care. You call us. You get us, if that's the case. We will pick up the pieces just like we did after you were gone. I loved what she said. And Irene, you're hundred percent right. Her mental health is not his story to tell. That is so invasive and so wrong for him to speak on that. It's like he violated her on so many levels, not only the affair and, but all these lies. It's gross. You, you fucked just, my best friend. Right. Tom knows you have shared that you have struggled with your mental health. I have. Yes. You have, he has clearly been next to you while you're going through things. I'm purported to be my supporter mm -hmm. and my partner in that. Why, if you were going to break up, why do you think you would leave everything and move? Like, do you still, well, now you did break up. You're not going to do that, right? <laughs> are we going to the French countryside? Like, I mean, where, are we going? <laughs> where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> I'm down. But like, when you said that to him, you really were like, I'm out. Because I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do all of this on my own or without him. And I didn't want to like, just kind of like be like, all right, I guess I'll move into an apartment in Studio City. And you know, I just was like, that's not what I want. And I I was like, if, if this is going to change my life dramatically, not being in that relationship, then I want to change it dramatically. I get what you're saying. It's like, I also appreciate, I think a lot of people can relate to this. Randomly, sometimes when you have the worst fight of your life with your partner, it does feel like you can see the light at the end of the tunnel because you're like, we have never been this candid. We have not right. spoken in yes. this way. So almost it allows for a dialogue where you're like, weirdly, we went backwards to kind of go forward. We're having that progress. is literally where I was at. I was right. literally where I was at because I'm also thinking to myself, a nine year relationship is not a relationship that ends on a, with a drunken 
Valentine's Day. By, by the way, we were wasted when we got home that night. Oh my so God. Like, He's trying to have a breakup conversation with her while they're wasted. Tom, we need to get some emotional maturity. This is very immature. That's, you don't just have right. one wasted conversation. And end a nine year and, relationship. Right. So, right. I, but to him, I, he was clearly, and obviously in that conversation, there was nothing brought up about him having an affair with anyone. Right. Um, so it's almost like, the whole thing, the whole thing was nonsense. And I remember right. asking, I was like, why did you get me flowers? If you were like, I'm going to break up with her. And he's like, well, I really, I wanted to get you flowers. You just, I was like, oh my God. He really, it really like, feels like he really wanted to have both. I think yep. so. I think he was very committed to the double life. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because do you actually believe he was going to end it before the reunion? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, it's like hard to know. I do. So it is interesting to hear her say like after they had this conversation and where did I just hear this recently? I heard this on the, oh, Succession. This is exactly what happened on Succession with um, Shiv and Tom is that, you know, she basically gave a similar monologue. Shout out to Succession. Let me know if there's any Succession fans because I was thinking about doing a video about the finale because it was just perfection. I loved every second of it. But um, Shiv and Tom have this awful fight on their um uh, not patio on there sorry we're now we're over two hours and that's when my brain's starting to get sleepy but on their uh walk out in new york city you know and uh their terrace i guess what the frick word am i looking for and they say these horrible all these deep down like things that they think and all this resentment has built up over the years and then it's it's almost like shiv throws it back at him and says well if you know uh i mean we've kind of already said the worst things to each other so that fear of someone saying those things it's already out there so maybe that's there's something very i'm paraphrasing but there's something very freeing about that and so i it's it's a it's sick but it's also relatable that there are situations where stuff's finally thrown out on the table and whether it's good truths or bad truths or things you want to hear or things you don't want to hear at least it's something and it feels like okay we got this bad shit out and now at least we can work with it and move forward so i feel like that's what ariana is saying in this moment like yes there there was a lot of stuff thrown out there and said and hurt and things but there was something so freeing about, well, it's out there. So now all we can do is either is we, we can build on that um, because that fear is no longer kind of holding us back. Uh, I know it's kind of triggering. Uh, Callie, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it so much. Um, oh, my goodness. So that reminded me of yeah, the Shiv and Tom uh, conversation. I think that <laughs> I've seen I've seen some things. I've learned some things even after from mm, the reunion. Tell us. Come on, give us the tea. Um, one of those things is um, a text message from Rachel to Tom saying, I just talked to a mutual friend, I won't name them. And they said that you should be honest with Ariana, maybe not so much about all the details like sleeping in the house together, but that she deserves to know about this. And then it's like, I love you, you got this. Oh, so kind just so so generous so i think it was only in that last little bit there right before i found out that it was even that, I, that it was being workshopped right that's when like when i saw oh my god gross so this is what i was talking about earlier when they were workshopping how he was going to deal with this breakup and rachel raquel kind of uh taking the reins then and saying hey i talked to someone who told me that they think that you should do it this way. I mean, so gross. Poor Ariana has to like they're they're literally deciding on Ariana's relationship fate. These two treacherous uh, human beings are now going to make the decisions and try to take the control over her life. It's so gross. And HC, I did hear this. Sheena said that Rachel was obsessed with Euphoria, and she somehow became Sydney Sweeney since she also slept with her friend's man. I mean, I love Euphoria too, and. Mm, yeah, Nate and and oh, that was ooh, that was very messy. And uh, I feel like I wouldn't put that past her. <laughs> it sounds so messed up that you're gonna act off of a yeah or off a TV show, but yeah. Thanks a lot, Rachel. Thanks a lot. 
Oh, thanks a lot, Rachel. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's keep going. That they, they were like, we were going to do it before the reunion because we could never sit in front of her and let her defend. I'm like, bro, that's what you've been doing. You've been sitting in front of her and letting her defend you and Raquel and everyone. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would the reunion be any fucking different? Right. I hate this shit. Okay, throughout this season, there were numerous comments from castmates about the dynamic of your guys' relationship. Again, before the, the affair came out. In January, you had to set the record straight that you and Tom were not in an open relationship. Why do you, now with all the information, why do you think that rumor started? Honestly, I think it came from him. Yep. I think that, which it's been denied, I'll say that, but I think that so it came out that day that all everyone was at my house um, that you see on the show that, I mean, obviously these conversations that are two minutes on the show are like two hours plus. And sometimes there are things that are said that are way worse than what is on. Like, Bravo, give it to us. What the fuck? like his and I, my, our conversation, there were things that were way worse. And then in that conversation with all my friends, I think it was Sheena was like, um, so one of our friends back, when this stuff started coming out and rumors were rumbling, it was apparently Rachel told a mutual friend that she thought me and Tom were in an open relationship because apparently he told her that at one point. And then when that got brought up, he was like, absolutely not. I never said that. And I was like, well, you should probably take that up with your little fucking girlfriend because she's the one who told that to someone else. And we found that out in part one of the reunion. Sheena lets it out that Rachel told her or that uh, mutual friend told Sheena that Rachel had said that, that it, Tom had been pursuing this um, way back from Coachella uh, 2022. So how, I mean, just how poetic that it's Tom Sandy, but that is starting this uh, open relationship rumor. Mm. And I, and you know what she said to that someone else? She said, even if that, she's like, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but I would way rather hook up with Ariana than Tom. And I think she said that because she was talking to a guy and she thought it was like hot, hot to be like, to say that. And so when Tom was like, I never said that, but I'm like, well, don't ask me. I'm not the one that's information that's being brought to me that she apparently said. It's so. weirdly, I do think in a strange way that is helpful to know because that narrative now knowing what we know very convenient like, that didn't get put out into the world by like no half and chance like it's not like everyone's like Sheena and Brock are in and open and it's like you know what I mean it's like mm -hmm. now knowing there's like a kernel of something that was planted somewhere uh -huh. that turned into something else. right yeah. like someone fucking knew it was an open relationship, but it was one fucking. And this is what Tom Sandy Butt does. He has a history and pattern of this. We've seen it on the show, planning his next relationship um, before his current relationship is over. That's what he does. He's like, we're such good friends. That's how he was with Ariana. He's like, oh, she's one of my best friends. And this is how now he is with Rachel Raquel. Oh, she's my best friend. Oh, she was there for me. There's one person, Because yeah. the other person's like, right. absolutely not. Like, I would have loved to have known. I would have been like, let me know so I can, like, you would have loved to know, like, many times earlier. So you're yes. like, oh, let me get on the same page. You're fucking Raquel. Got it. I'm out. Right. Like, he was operating, yeah. telling people that probably, so that it wouldn't get back to you. Because, because then people thing. go, oh, well, then they must have some sort of, like, Tru trust, some mm -hmm. rule. And so I'm not going to bring it up to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds fairly likely to Absolutely. me. Katie at one point said something along the lines of, Ariana doesn't care. She just cares when people talk about it and she doesn't want to look dumb. Comments like that insinuating you and Tom had a different relationship and understanding off camera than on camera. And those comments were pretty heavy throughout the season of like, mm -hmm. they've got this thing on the side that no one talks about. I remember Lala went on a podcast and was like, they are the most different off camera. Like, how does that sit with you? I mean, to be honest, and I do love Katie and I do love Lala, but those were people who are not really in our inner circle, like whatsoever for the last many years. Okay. And I don't think anyone within our inner circle would ever say anything like that. Um, if you were to interview Logan or Brad or even cool Sheena, culture, they would not say that. And those are people that we spent like a lot of time together with, went on trips with, things like that. So, I mean, I get to them, maybe they think that that's fine, but they were not in our inner circle. Prior to the scandal, there had been other rumors of Tom cheating with other women. And it was disclosed in the fin finale that you did know about one of them in Miami. You guys weren't official. You talked about that. Now, knowing who Tom really is, how many people do you think? 
Oh, no. There was one years and years ago that I, I got a DM that was like, Tom hooked up with my friend in San Diego. And I was like, and I brought it up over and over and over and over again. Cause I was like, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. And I, and it was like, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. Like, you know what I mean? It was like really just right. a no that now I'm like, no, I think that was a yes. Um, and then there's specifically the one that he said, oh yeah, there was one other time. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. I know exactly who that is yeah. also. Yeah. But that being said, how so there's already this history of her, you know, having to question him, women coming out and him being like, no, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so he just continues the lie for so long again, just confirming this unnecessarily cruel behavior pattern that he has. Ugh. Like, I, I don't know, because it's like, I don't know, there, because I feel like he was so. I mean, there was stuff that he was getting away with that I learned out about, like, within the last month. Like what? Like bringing Rachel home to St. Louis. Ah, this was just, I mean, when this news came out and the pictures came out that he brought Rachel Raquel home to St. Louis during Christmas. Uh, again, the audacity, the audacity of this man. <sighs> just bringing his mistresses around. We're going to learn he uses other people's credit cards. He booked her in rooms. I mean, it's just really, I don't even have the words. Sick and disgusting. Um, yes, variant. Wants. Yes. While you were dating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his family. Okay. I, we'll just listen again to that. Because it's like, I don't know. There, because I feel like he was so, I mean, there was stuff that he was getting away with that I learned <laughs> out about. Like, and those are like long last month. Like what? Like bringing Rachel home to St. Louis. When did he do that? Um, apparently more than once. <gasps> while you were dating. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that part. More than once. Ah! Oh my god. Oh yeah. my. Oh my god. We gotta just play a quick little video. I just. I. I oh my god. Yeah, my mother if I were you, I'd be real nice right now, especially if you want some money on your books. <gasps> Tell me, very nice if you want some money on your books. You're lying. No, I'm not You're lying. You're lying, Kimmy. You're lying. No, I'm not You're lying. You're lying, Kimmy. You're lying. Goodbye, Kyle. Goodbye, Kyle. Get the f out of my house. I swear to you, I'm done with it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need lip gloss for this shit. This is just too much. <laughs> oh. God. Family knew? It's hard to say like what exactly they knew or when they knew. I think they at one point they knew, but they were like definitely not condoning. And he wasn't, he was like putting her up in like a hotel. Um, like how diabolical to bring your side chick to your home. Like, mm -hmm. like, and were they not afraid of Papa? Like, what? I guess I mean it's St. Louis. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how like, they not goes there. <laughs> but you know what? That being said. There were some <laughs> rumblings even before I knew if, whether or not that was true. There were rumblings of that on the internet. So definitely somebody had seen something. Okay. At some point. What do you think about the Billy Lee situation? I do not think that anything happened there. You don't? Um, I don't. And I, the reason I don't is because, I mean, Billy Lee, I, okay. I understand that this sounds crazy because Raquel was someone I loved and tried, you know what I'm saying? Right. You're like, but, but I do really, I trust that Billy Lee would not do that. Have you asked? She has, we've talked about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Based on people saying things online, she. So Ariana is telling us, and we can only go by, you know, respect for Ariana. She says that Billy Lee and Tom are not doing it. And I hope not, Billy Lee. I hope it is just a situation where he needed someone hopefully film with him on an upcoming season. I don't know. But Billy Lee has been gone for a while and now she's back and hanging out over there and walking Ariana's dog. But it sounds like according to Ariana, she believes her. I also saw Billy Lee is doing comedy now, stand-up comedy. So maybe we'll be on a show in LA in the future. I don't know. Maybe I can ask her. I wouldn't ask her. I would feel too weird. But uh, it's just... Uh... It looks suspect because there's already been rumors out about them. I'm just curious why Ariana believes her, but that's, you know, Ariana knows more than we do, but, oh, Lord, be careful. But, I mean, 
Yeah, but just be careful. It's been, yeah. Right. Yeah. Has anyone reached out to you since to be like, I also hooked up with him? Um, They have not. Okay. I haven't had anyone do that. Okay. That's good for your mental health. Or are they scared? <laughs> are they scared? You'll be like, on oh, Caller Daddy, like, yup, Brittany from fucking Australia said that, like, <laughs> no. Dude, honestly, I would not. If a girl, if any. Good point, Candy. I mean, <laughs> maybe it was one of those situations where she said, I can't be aligned with anyone, like she said, who is friends uh, and wants to associate with Tom Sandy Butt. But maybe they've spoken and she just believes that they weren't cheating, but she's now been like, all right, if you pick him as a friend, then I'm, I can't roll with you. But I also believe you didn't cheat with him. I don't know, but there was already that rumor. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And this dude can't control his wiener. So I think he hooked up with Billy Lee. Sort of. I don't know. Women did do that. Yeah, you're not. I would not put them on blast because honestly, at the end of the day, as much as I think that they suck for doing that because they knew we were together, um, it's their responsibility. See, but Ariana's mature. So obviously she's like, even if women did message me and say, hey, I had hooked up with him too, she wouldn't put them on blast because she knows that, you know, the um, internet would go crazy on them and they're not um public figures you know so it's kind of the the similar thing it, it's it's a hard i mean it's it's really weighing you have to weigh out whether you want to expose someone like that it's kind of like when someone sends you like you know i've gotten hate mail in the past or people sending or posting horrible things about me and then you know i've shared uh, that in like a story because I feel like a lot of times with this kind of thing the best thing is you can do two things you just ice it out you don't pay attention to it or you can um because you don't want to feed a troll and stuff or you can um expose it and when I've had like men coming after me I've tried to you know expose it when they've said like disgusting things and sexual things and that um but if they're not someone who has a platform if it's just a person and if I share it in my story and it shows their name on their Instagram, then, you know, you run the risk of making them a target. But then it's kind of like, well, they were already being vile human beings. Um, so Haryana's just very mature, very mature. Am I going to the person in a relationship? I also think, weirdly, now knowing the drama of like the open relationship rumor he may have been putting sure. out, what I've always said, like, Men, when they want to put their penis in something, they will say, and like a married man will be like, no, we're in the middle of a divorce. Later, he goes home to his wife. Like, like will she, sadly, she passed her. Like, she like, passed away. Like, like, already she's, not, like, literally, like she's not yeah. here. Like, he, we don't even know how he's, it's already so diabolical how crazy it's gotten that it wouldn't be surprising if every room he walked into in order to get a girl, like it was like, we're on a break or we're like, it just, sure. it, it's, it's, I fucking hate men. Okay. Um, <laughs> does... Being completely honest with yourself, mm -hmm. do you think you ever subconsciously turned a blind eye? Yes. Yeah. But I think I, I do like how candid and honest Ariana is being. I mean, this is this this is very brave. Was given a lot of assistance in doing that because I would bring things up and I would be shot down. And or I yes, the oh, let me see your phone. I think that I was given a lot of assistance in that. You know what I mean? Like, and he, he even said on the show, like, well, she didn't follow me. It's like, how much effort? I hated that so much when Tom Sandy Butt's like, well, like, dude, I was like cheating on her. I would like dip out. And like, she never even like followed me. So uh, you're putting the onus on the woman that you are betraying and cheating on to go be freaking uh inspector gadget law and order go find your ass be a detective and follow you are you that is some sick shit like obviously she didn't love me enough like dude ariana you could have like freaking followed me ariana you should have like went look for me ariana no that's not what you do in a grown-up relationship that was crazy when he said that. Should I be putting forth in a yes. relationship? She is not Harriet the Spy. Thank you, Teresa. I was looking for a better analogy. But I was like, two hours and 43 minutes in, I feel like Jolene's brain is getting a little sleeping. Stalking my partner yeah. in order to know for sure, like, what they're doing. Like, that, oh, God, his freaking the ego, the narcissism of him to be like, you should have followed me. If you really loved me, you would stalk me.
I get what you're saying. And I think also to women listening, like we talked about you going through his phone and there are no texts. So it's like, at what point you have to just trust your partner? Because then you start to actually feel crazy. Like, am yeah. I being just like so untrusting? Like, right, and you're like, am I just like a fucking bitch? Because now I'm being, you know, that person that's just so like, so what? And am I their mom now? That's going to be like every time they come home. And how unattractive to like play the mom role in this relationship with your partner. I mean, but that is Tom. He is so childish. And like I've compared him a million times to just like a prepubescent little boy with a freaking, uh, you know, who just is always, uh, you know, getting mad at his mom. For ridiculous reasons like come on why you have to feed me dinner Ugh. i was gonna dip on i don't need to eat like bitch you know i'm not gonna make my bed i'm gonna spread my seed everywhere like, he's just freaking gross he's gross am i gonna be like all right let me see your phone you know like that whole thing and it's like and then you start to feel like the psycho mm -hmm. and they become the more normal one that's like you're so crazy like well and then they get to use that against you later on so it's like mm -hmm. you're either not psycho enough to like not figure it out uh-huh or you're so you're too psycho and you're like they don't you can't win as a woman you can't win i That's now it. i'm gonna break exactly so they're like you're so crazy here's my phone look and it's like <laughs> well then open the ipad if you didn't delete those messages Did, were his messages connected yes that's a great point remember still to this day he still pegs Kristen as crazy, 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 crazy. He uses that um, stigmatized mental health, calling someone crazy. I mean, Dave Chappelle has a whole interview he did on actors, uh, the actor's studio, inside the actor's studio with that one guy, I forget his name. And he's like, the 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 thing you can do it dehumanizes someone. The worst thing you can be called is crazy. It dehumanizes you. And he uses the example of what happened with Martin Lawrence. And, you know, it happens a lot. And in uh, even Hollywood, once you then he uses Mariah Carey as an example. And once you're deemed as crazy, you know, the stigma is so strong that then, you know, you you're 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 basically nothing. Then, of course, like, oh, OK, yeah, they're crazy. It's dismissive. And Dave Chappelle says it a lot better than I'm paraphrasing here, but that's exactly what he did with Kristen. And that's what he was uh, doing with Ariana. So again, this dude's patterns are strong. Tasha, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, what kills is the Tom team playing in her face. Uh, feels like they don't bring that up enough. Oh, the Toms. Yes. Playing in her face, especially with Schwartz with the inside jokes, knowing what he knew. And you're like, but you still made those awful jokes during glamping about uh, Rachel Raquel having a type guys that are taken. And you even named Tom Sandoval, like watch out Tom, but you knew they were having an affair. That's some sick shit. Like they enjoyed humiliating this woman that shows that, you know, there was enjoyment in that Schwartz. He didn't really give a shit. Why would you make a joke? If you think it's so horrible that Tom is cheating on Ariana and Ariana's your friend. And you told him to do the right thing. Why are you making jokes about it right in front of her face when she doesn't know? You're right. It isn't being talked enough because Schwartz, again, he gets he gets uh, off the hook because people say, oh, he's dumb. He's not dumb. Oh, he's just a pussy. No, he I've seen him a buck up to women again. I've seen him throw Katie under the bus a million times. So. Mm -mm. Um, like, oh, I think she has a crush on someone else. That too, exactly. And Rachel's type is men who are attached. Yep, right in her face. Machiavellian evil, HG says. Um, Christine says they do that to women all the time with the you're crazy. Of course, it's the hysteria. We're, we're hysterical. Just, oh, sh women are hysterical. It's like... Shelly Marie says, I was so proud of Sheena for bringing that up. Yes, women work together on this show. Aaron says, gaslighting is when uh, makes uh, call women nuts, uh, psycho, crazy. And then uh, when they get caught, yes, the gaslighting starts then. Yep, he left Kristen in therapy. And Irene, great point. He left Kristen in therapy. Kristen had to go through all, I mean, she's so much better for it. I mean, you just, you listen to Kristen now and she's just like this evolved, beautiful, you know, human being. Um, not that she wasn't a beautiful human being already, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just the the progression of taking control of her own mental health 
And, you know, she had to go through being shunned and shamed, obviously, by all of her friends and kind of a rebirth of Kristen Doty. So he left Kristen in therapy and Rachel in the mental spa was working on Ariana. This dude. Oh, my God. Ryan Murphy. This should be the next season of American Horror Story. This narcissist dudes like Tom who are literally driving women to the uh, asylum. This is a whole new level of asylum. Crazy. I've had. No. Oh, you're so. Oh, and you know why? Because at one point they were, and it was just like, we just get so many, and it would just be dinging, ding, ding. Right. So it was like, we got to turn that, turn that off. This was years and years ago. It was just like the amount of the set, I know. But the Find My iPhone app, I, you know, could see where the devices all were located. Um, and they were always located somewhere that they should be. Uh -huh. The band rehearsal space or Schwartz's apartment. How much of the affair do you think happened at Schwartz's house? I think more than Schwartz is willing to let on. Cause they just made love in a better Coors Light, okay? With, I assume, the, the armpit clippings of Schwartz all over the apartment. Cause he's just like, how do I cut these armpit hairs now that Katie doesn't want to be with me? Ugh, gross. The recording was at Schwartz's, and he apparently felt real comfortable there. Uh, yeah, in that sad, sad apartment, <laughs> in that sad, sad location. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking gross. Yeah. Um, do you think you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier? But do you think you were so quick to defend Tom? Not just about this, like through seasons, you've always had his back. You've always been ride or die. And I think so many people, including myself, respected you for always being like, I'm going to stand by my fucking mm -hmm. partner. Mm -hmm. But do you think that you would be so quick to defend him so that people wouldn't think less of him? She so probably does. Trim the pits. <laughs> Lexi. Yeah, definitely both. Because I didn't want people, I always saw a side of him that I felt like wasn't apparent on the show or on social media or whatever. I always felt like I saw a side of him that was like the home side. All right, I do, there's one, there's 53 minutes left of this. I wanna make this a separate video because I do wanna get into this because I think what Ariana's talking about right here, let me screenshot it so I know where we're at. Um, I'll set up another live and we can go over this, you guys, because we're close to three hours and I know I'm not going to be able to do it justice at all because my brain is getting so sleepy and I must eat. But uh, you guys are brilliant in the comments. Thank you so much. And I really want to hit on that idea of uh, we as women and trying to... Um, you know, what we see, it's almost like, you know, women often, you know, I don't, it's, it's through a lot of teaching and conditioning where it's like, uh, it is like what, what could be what this man could be, you know, it's again, this savior thing that we're told, you know, he just needs a good woman. And then he'll stop putting his dick in holes, you know, just needs a good woman. And it's like, ugh. yeah. So then their shame comes from next. Like, I guess I wasn't a good woman because he keeps putting his dick in random holes, you know? And he said, it didn't even matter. Just whatever. So I really want to kind of talk about that and get into that a little bit with you guys. And you guys are just freaking brilliant in the chat. So um, thank you so much for hanging out with me for almost three hours as we talk about this Call Her Daddy podcast. Again, I will link it after I post this video um, so you can watch the whole thing. Shout out to Alex. Great freaking interview. Not that you need me to tell you that, but um, it just, it was, it was really good. I mean, I think this was Andy Cohen wishes he could do this. Kind of You're like all shade, no shade, all shade. Andy wishes, but I think it really took um, another woman to be, be able to be this insightful and someone who's experienced something similar. And Alex does uh, share her own cheating story. So, um, Welcome, Leslie from Austin. So thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for all the super chats. Thank you for all the comments and the likes and subscribing. You guys are wonderful, beautiful little pumpkin spice babies. And I'll be back um, this week, Thursday. So the episode airs tomorrow. I can't believe it's already Wednesday tomorrow. And I get my Tempur-Pedic bed on Thursday. I'm so excited. Uh, okay. So I'll be back Thursday night. I already set up the live. So make sure you uh, go give that a like as well and make sure you smash the bell so you get notified as soon as I go live. But I'm going to go live Thursday at 5. I think I set it for like 5.05 Pacific. So it'll. I want to have time to watch the Peacock version of the uh, 
reunion part two because I got to have the swears. I'm not effing around with no beeps. I need the straight swears for this. So I'll be doing a recap of part two of the reunion this Thursday and I'll set up a live to finish the last hour of the call her daddy interview with Ariana Maddox. Thank you guys again. Have a wonderful night and always remember to enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you see.